Welcome to the 2017 Sound of Violence MMA Podcast Awards, hosted by Pulver and Chris Medaffer. Shit's about to get weird. What up, what up everybody, and welcome to the first annual Sound of Violence MMA Podcast Awards. Uh, if you guys don't know, this show is an MMA podcast about MMA podcasts. I am Pulver, and I am here with my co-host, Chris Medaffer. What up, bro? Merry Christmas. Early Christmas. That's right. As you guys can tell by the weird sleigh bell effect I added to the barfly theme in the intro, uh, if you guys are not drinking for this episode, I highly recommend you be drinking for this episode. Uh, I have been sick all week, if you can't tell by my voice, and I am boozing it up. I got some cold medicine in me it's gonna be a heck of a show and i am wearing a hazmat suit not but, really that's right emotionally chris is wearing a hazmat suit he might have been the one that gave me the cold last week to be fair so that uh, is true. hence the weird voice on the intro you heard hence the weird voice on all the yeah clips we, the sound of violence does not kidnap people in that's case you're right. wondering based Dis- on the intro that's right despite our best sound effects we do not kidnap people on the regs just every once in a while when they need it um, and we will go ahead and get into format, but this is our going to be our big holiday episode since we had a week off. We're going to go through and tell you guys all of our picks for uh, some of the different categories that we've come up with, all willy-nilly and zero science behind. Uh, but we just wanted to shout out a bunch of the MMA podcasts that were dope in 2017, and I'm pretty hyped about it, bruh. Hell Yeah. Oh, I should mention, we I uh, should shout out our sponsors. First off, obviously, uh, Kangaroos MMA out in Sydney, as always. Shouts out to Judo Bill Tyler, the homie. Uh, also, shouts out to the MMA community forums, who are the only place I go to for live uh, f- threads on fights while they're happening, because it's hilarious, and everyone's just smoking weed and getting fucked up. Uh, but we are drinking the Sierra Nevada Hazy Little Thing IPA, which is pretty good. Pretty goddamn good, man. Pretty Unfiltered good. little IPA, kind of has a taste of a session IPA, and it's all around fantastic. Yeah. Drinking out of a can. Yeah, I haven't poured it into a glass, which we'll have to do later, but uh, the haziness of it, pretty interesting. I'm a pretty big fan, so... Pretty hyped, but we will go ahead and jump into our first category. Well, actually, first, before we do that, Chris, uh, you actually went and took notes this week, which I did not do because I'm a trash person who's been sick all week. So is there anything you wanted to shout out quickly up at the top of uh, like any podcast you heard that thought needed to be shouted out or anything dope? I know the Vivid Section did a not sorry not Vivid Section MMA Depressus did a good show. Uh, Rogan's Eddie Bra- Rogan's MMA podcast episode six that he did with eddie bravo was good Uh, yeah i listened to his um fuck was it last week i talked about when he interviewed steve yeah yeah steve was episode five yeah that was last week okay see my brain's uh well i don't know if you listened to it last week i know i did Um, okay i might have and i probably mentioned i just can't remember uh talk and talker i want to shout out this week they had max holloway on there oh great episode um, the funny thing is, DC talked about, we haven't seen the video yet, there's a video of Francis Ngannou sleeping on a bus, and DC wakes him up by I've seen that him. video. Yeah, he it's actually great. mentions it. If you've seen the movie Face Off, which is a great movie if you're drunk or high, yeah. there's a part where John Travolta's character, uh, I don't know, he has this thing where he touches his family over his face, like he runs his fingers over their face to let them know that it's him. He basically, DC is saying he's doing it to Francis. It's real creepy, yeah. that's exactly what he does. Yeah. It's very creepy. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, it's hilarious. And then and he DC made that at the end goes, You gotta watch out around me. Yeah. All creepy. Yeah. What the fuck? Um, hmm. So I wanted to shout that out. Uh, They're basically just talking about uh, DC thinks Colby Covington is a genius for his Star Wars spoiler tweet, as did Luke Thomas, because I remember Luke Thomas yeah. had a thing that he sponsored. He loved it was it. a great guy. How fucking great this is. I'll tell you, like, even though I got spoiled. It doesn't matter. I thought it was hilarious. Who care? Also, who cares? Who cares? Spoiled yeah. Star Wars. Like you're still gonna see the fucking like, movie. Yo, you know what spoiled Star Wars? The the fucking middle three F goddamn movies. That's what spoiled Star Wars. Yeah, pretty much. And yeah, well, I don't want to say anything more because, but, but yeah, uh, shouts out to that. 
the only other one I want to quickly shout out. I know uh, Mike Swick did a Khabib Nurmagomedov Madoff podcast episode, and he also had someone else on. Oh, shouts out to Unfiltered for today's episode right. with Jim Norton with the insane. Where they lose their goddamn mind. Matt Sarah kept talking about Star Wars Last Jedi. He's like, yep. Jimmy, I gotta keep telling you how great this movie is. Well, and then Matt Jim Norton uh, like was that. talking about uh, Jorge Masvidal's tweet to Michael Bisbing and his impression of Jorge Masvidal sounded like Don Vito Corleone from the Godfather series and his fucking impression of Michael Bisming sounded like goddamn Pee Wee Herm. Or like Mrs. Doubtfire or yeah. like the weirdest. Or, yeah, Matt's like, Jimmy, what's your impression of Michael Bisming? You know, who's an Englishman. Hey, man, you know, man, I'm Michael Bisping. Yeah. You're like, what the fuck is going on? It was real weird. So that was real bad. Uh, they talked to Julian Marquez, who's a very, probably one of the most enthusiastic fighters I've ever heard. He's fun to listen to. And he, yeah, he's cool on interviews. I've heard him on uh, some someone else's show, too. And, and then I want to say maybe John Morgan. One last shout out to a podcast I have never listened to. They're called Loudmouth MMA. Uh, half those guys, the guy named Kyle Steele and his buddy Fred and Zach, they're from a place called Xenia, Ohio, which is one of the capitals of white trash America. They wow. said they discussed Wait, a did bar. they say that or you said that? They said that. They're all, they consider themselves all white trash. Oh, uh, they said they they used to grow up going to a bar called Roosters where next door at a Taco Bell, there would occasionally be an overdose from a junkie who died in the bathroom. So they had to renovate the place occasionally. Okay. Um, the first 17 minutes of this podcast. I don't hate this podcast yet, but I, I'm the starting The first to. 17 minutes was all non-UFC related. They were talking about just growing up being white trash and the police and military and being in the army and I was like okay let's speed it up here and then eventually they talked about how they love Colby Covington and they said that if Colby Covington were to fight Rafael dos Anjos in Brazil he should walk out in a Darth Vader costume with a theme song which actually would be fucking great if you think about it well unless Reebok For a second. makes a Darth Vader costume I don't see that happening yes uh, they said calling Brazilians filthy animals is xenophobic not racist clearly anyone with the brain would know that it is xenophobic not racist because Brazil is not a race or ethnicity right. People, it's just a nationality. Yep, because Brazil is all of the races. Yeah, uh, they were just saying before RDA's performance against Robbie Lawler, they assumed Colby would mop the floor with RDA because he's so undersized. I mean, that's a fair assessment because RDA is small for that weight class, he really is. He's um, a boy. Other than that, they're saying Jordan Mean beat Eric Silva in the battle of who gives a shit. <laughs> they said the loser will get cut anyway. Sure. They said, uh, some guy said, Olawale Bangboze is garbage with a terrible fight and a horrible fight IQ, but at least he's cute. I'm like, okay. That's I mean... A, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, and then they made terrible deaf jokes about Matt Hamill, saying, since Matt Hamill can't hear when he beat John Jones, did he do the old classic silent cheer back then when they went like this over their head with their arms, you know? I was like, okay, I get it. These guys are assholes. And then they had a lot of misogynistic talk and racist shit. And oh, and homophobic shit. One of the guys in there, I think it was a guy named Kyle, he was like, oh, if you don't agree with me on this, then clearly you're homosexual. And I had to rewind that and saying, wait, did they really just say this? And I'm like, fuck this podcast. So you know what, Loudmouth MMA? I probably, I constantly say, go fuck yourself. Well, I am not hesitating in saying, uh, we'll go ahead and ban Loudmouth MMA from 2018. Yeah. We'll see you in 2019, y'all. Hopefully, y'all are, uh, you have the internet by then. So, uh, that, uh, that's all I'd say. All that's said to that. Submission Radio is fantastic. A lot of good guests on there. I'll just say they had John Morgan, who's great as always. From yeah, Emily Junkie. John Morgan and Submission Radio are great. Javier combo. Mendez was great. He was talking about Javier's how confident great. he is in Habib. Uh, he knows the risk against going such a, a prolific striker who he thinks is the best striker in a lightweight division, not named Conor McGregor, only because of what McGregor did to Alvarez. That's, I mean, I get it. You know, McGregor is a fantastic striker. We yeah. all know that. Uh, they're talking about Luke Rockhold's upcoming fight against Robert Whitaker. And, you know, I'll, I'll leave it at that because we got a lot of shit we got to go through. But we I got just a lot of stuff. Quick shout outs, real quick. And uh, that's perfect for me. Yeah, the only ones I wanted to shout out, I mean, I pretty much already did. Uh, here, I'll quickly double check on the podcast I've been listening to. 
Um, but the main ones are, oh, you know what? Since I'm shouting out random shit, shout out to the 2017 Vaulties from the Film Vault. Also, shout out to the Giant Bomb Game of the Year episodes, which are big Who influences. Did they Game of the Year, by the way? Did they give it to the Zelda? Probably? I have a damn. So their episodes for this year come out on Monday. Uh, that's five days worth of episodes. On the fifth day, they debate the final Game of the Year. Because I remember it's, it's great. I love. By the way, if you guys don't follow Giant Bomb and you like video games, I saw this one of the publication was thinking about giving it to PUBG, but it's, since it's in it's, game previous, it so could be. Could. So it got, re- it, but it got released before the end of the year. Yeah. So, uh, and they knew the release date, so it might. You, I would not be surprised if PUBG did get Game of the Year from Giant Bomb. Uh, but uh, the, those are the two big influences on why I wanted to do a big end of the year uh, award show. Those and Anakin Florian. Uh, Anakin Florian, the Film Vaults, Vaulties, and the Giant Bomb Game of the Year shows are all, are always fun for me. I always like at the end of the year when no one's doing shit, they always come up with like, hey, let's do a look back on the year and all the cool shit you've you've heard and all, everything you forgot about. And it's always like kind of enlightening and you go like, Holy shit, that was this year? That feels like two years ago. Or holy shit, that feels like a week ago. That was in January. Honest, yeah, it feels like just yesterday I was recording a podcast in Rotterdam. Oh, exactly. That's a trip. Yeah, exactly. So it's And that was more, way more than a year ago. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, that, well, I mean, it you was You got back, I guess year. it was about this time well, last I, year. I got back January, here in January. Right? So 11 months ago. Exactly. But still, but yeah. But well, we've come ago, a long way no, since then. A year yeah. ago... Tomorrow we recorded the fucking cradle to the grave thing. That's a right. year ago tomorrow. That's insane. That is and that was a fun crazy. time, dude. That was hilarious. True. That's one of the. That's probably our overall best commentary. I don't know. One of our, I would. I would argue Fight Valley is up there. Yeah. Also, uh, G Six and the. Uh, yeah, that's anything G Six has been involved in, really. Oh man, there's been some fun ones. Scarecrow Gone Wild. We cannot forget. Ever, can we tell everyone what our next movie might be? Well, so our. Our next movie for sure is already going to be as decided on by our sponsor judo bill tyler our next movie which is in two weeks is going to be the uh shit the movie with stefan uh no stephen not stephen true stephen bonner was that that like psycho assassin yeah thing? no it's like he has to fight people to save someone or something oh, i don't no. know it's it's so supposed like to be ridiculous soldier. It's something like that, but worse from what I've heard. Great. He's like, it's not Scarecrow Got Wild Bad, but it's similar. So I'm very excited for that. Yeah, because that was pretty tough to get. And then the one after that, I believe. Well, didn't Karen want to do Captain America? Uh, oh, it was either Captain America or. Technically, I mean, I'm a little Or the Triple X with Bisbig in it. This is the thing. Those are the two options. If, if it's me, we choose Triple X because I feel like that's objectively bad when Captain well, America was Bisbing. critically acclaimed. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, it, It'll be like, more fun. Literally, the only part you can make fun of like, Winter Soldier is GSP. I agree. Uh, yeah, so we might as well do Xander Cage. Oh, I agree. That's bad. And but it's gonna be a bit, I think, until we get to that one. But oh, it's all good. Everyone, go, uh, go. I don't know. Join the uh, join the game, <laughs> fucking MMA tycoon, and go find Judo Bill Tyler and uh, tell him how you're excited to hear that commentary because I'm excited to hear that commentary. That movie is supposed to be terrible. Anyway. Uh, yeah, I wanted to give that shout out to Giant Bomb and to the Film Vault for that. Uh, TJ DeSantis and Klotz MMA put out the UFC 13 Part 1 preview. That was great. Uh, and that's pretty much it. That's all I've listened to. I didn't listen to shit all week. I've been sick as fuck. Um, I mean, I guess I listened to like Co-Main was good. All the regulars were good. I have nothing helpful to say here. Uh, MMA to press us. Great as always. But we will go ahead and get into format. Chris, are you ready for our fucking award show? Yeah. Which we st- we, we never came up with a name for. We're going for with the Sound of Violence MMA Podcast Awards. That's good enough for because me. Because the Viol- La Violencias or uh, what are the other dumb ones we came up with? The, the so- Sovas. Sovies. The Sovies. They all, the SOV bodies. Yeah, they all sounded terrible. Yeah, they all sounded yeah, potty terrible. sounds terrible. <laughs> no, I wasn't going to do that. Trust me. Uh, but, yeah, we build on all those. So, we will go ahead and get into format. So, let's jump into the first segment. Most Consistent MMA Podcast. 
All right. So most consistent podcast. Uh, by uh, should we, Chris? Actually, before we start, should we give our picks first and then give the pick by the numbers, or should we do by the numbers first? Let's do by the numbers first. What do you think? No, we should do Last. our picks first because it kind of yeah, makes okay. a surprise. Like, Perfect. oh wait, but that one was the real one. Perfect. So uh, the numbers. We should clarify. By the numbers means I went through and I looked at all of the podcasts that we listened to this year and we talked about. God bless you for doing that. And well, taking your time to go through and listen to all of our. Luckily, all I have a, episodes. I haven't. Oh, I didn't listen at all. I have downtime at work, and I we may, we <laughs> oh, have meticulous yeah, yeah, show right. notes, which are very helpful on our website. If you guys go to sovpod.com or the sound of violence.com, we have all of our show notes which are searchable so if you're ever looking for hey have we talked about a certain podcast or certain episode uh if you google it in the search by clicking the search option on our website it's easy to find and i use it all the time because it's super helpful so uh we will start off chris why don't you get into your most consistent podcast of this year this is just a podcast you feel like pretty much was always there and always pulled through like it just consistent as shit for me it was uh luke thomas's wednesday live chat aka also known as promotional malpractice malpractice. yeah Uh, i liked it a lot because of the live chat and the fact that he had he would look at live chat coming from fans and emails and uh i liked how some things he responds to them as far as like you know not ever using yellow mustard on certain things right jim b he's often things considering all of his haters as donks yeah you know um i I like that one a lot because it kind of gave more of an authentic feel as far as you know people who listen to his podcast are fans they want to hear what fans have to say and the fact that he's kind of directly reaching out to them and answering their questions it kind of makes it really it it makes it a good feel as far as what you want to hear and i feel like he did a really good job of doing that and that's why for me he was considered Consistently good for sure, and that show has a lot of range. Where like half the time it'll be a preview, half the time it'll be a recap, half the time it'll just be fucking Luke Thomas talking about whatever donk booze he every he thinks everyone should hate. Yeah, like I don't like, I don't like, like this. I don't like this kind of Jim Beam, but yeah. if you drink this kind of bourbon, then you're okay. Yeah, yeah, it's a fun show, and I always enjoy it for sure. Uh, my most consistent podcast of 2017 is the Co-Main Event Podcast. Good pick. They're, they're just like a fucking... They're like home cooking. They're just... Every every Tuesday morning, or, I wake up... Or, I was going to say... Because they yeah, release they Monday, Monday afternoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So every Tuesday morning or Wednesday, if I'm too hungover on Tuesday, I want to save it for when I don't feel like shit. I'll wake up, I'll listen to that as I'm going to work. Get some coffee at me. I feel way better. It's just a... Uh, some some funny yuck yucks from Chad Dundas and Ben Folks. They'll, they'll make some they'll make some goofy ben analogies. Folks occasionally talking about his uh, forty and over hockey league. You That's know, right. Finally getting into the penalty box. Some sweet hockey talk. <laughs> we'll learn about the proper bags to keep hockey equipment in. That's right. I remember that? And that smelled like shit. Yeah. I remember that playing hockey in high school. Uh, my mom would be mad. Like, hey, uh, can I give you some Febreze? Thanks, mom. <laughs> right. It's just uh, it's a fun podcast, and while I don't mention it a ton because it's so consistent that like. I just know what to expect from it every week. So unless they have like a, some crazy line or like do some weird way off the rails bit or like Sir Nigel goes crazy, I rarely bring it up on the show. But Wait, it's just most consistently the say, one I will always. I'm convinced catch. at this point the Nigel guy is definitely their producer because he's the guy that introduces. I'm, the so, I'm thinking so. Yeah. But every once in a while, I still think it's Chad. It's not. There's. No, I know. I know. I know. I know. Don't but like the voices are not. I know. But, it, it, but to be fair, I, you have to, I, I have to realize, like, they're from the same area, probably. Yeah, so. yeah. No, I know. But it's not. I it's know what you mean. Yeah. Trust yeah. me. I thought that, too, but it's definitely a different guy. I'm with you. I'm Who with they're you. never going to name. Because that'd be, that would ruin the whole fun. For sure. So uh, those are our most consistent episodes of 2017. For our ep- most consistent... Oh, should we ep- say some honorable mentions, too? Uh, well, we will in a second. Oh, that's right. For our most consistent episode by the numbers, uh, based on how many times we mentioned this episode, you already know it's going to be MMA Fortnite. Uh, the MMA Hour, I guess we will officially say, which the is MMA ironic four, since I M- use Cobain. The MMA Four Hours. If you guys don't know and you don't listen to the Cobain Event podcast, you're fucking up. But that's obviously the, since the Cobain Event always refers to Ariel's show as the co or as the MMA Fortnite. That's all I will ever refer to it as on this show. Uh, but 
it, it's it's good. It's great. Like uh, if the if the guests are good, it's a good show. If the guests aren't good, it's not a bad show. Ariel, it's consistent. Ariel Hawani does a fantastic job at getting great guests. Yeah, no, he gets he's the best at getting guests consistently week to week. Uh, I actually in our we'll have some guest categories later in the tallies. I didn't include Ariel Hawani stats because they would skew the tallies so fucking hard. Yeah, because he has so many guests and the, like even if he has the same guests over the period of a year three times that skews the fucking it skews everything by a lot because of how often he gets mentioned so uh, great show obviously everyone knows MMA Fortnite uh, but it should be noted as a uh, consistent podcast that I, you all know this if you're listening to this show uh, some other ones though Chris that were most consistent what are you thinking I saw you made your honorable mentions, right? Yeah, we had, like, uh, Unfiltered was on there. In like, the fact that they come out with so many episodes a week. And, yeah, two a week. And, and they, again, post super solid guests. Uh, although it's not most consistent in quality, that should be noted, I would say. They're always... Chris, the producer, I gotta shout out to him. He, as he's, far as, he's, like, he's pretty... He's solid yeah. as fuck. Whoever Chris, the producer, is, good on you, Chris. That's <laughs> you right. Know. From two Chris's to another Chris. Yeah, no, he does a fantastic job, and like the episode I mentioned today, he, he chimed in a lot. They um, the episode they did today for Thursday, they did their twenties eighteen predictions of who will be champ right. by December. He had a lot of good insight. He, you could tell he's very knowledgeable as well as far as he definitely likes knowledge. the sport. Yeah. Shit like, and yeah. I really appreciate that. And the other producer I want to shout out here's an unofficial category producer of the year. Not really, uh, Jacob from Chael's, uh You're welcome is fucking great. Oh, there you too. go. That dude's a solid guy. That should be shit. You're right. That should have been a category. We'll throw TJ DeSantis in there as the uh, number one pick for me. And another shout out to New York Rick. That guy is pretty solid. Yeah, New York Rick's great too. Those Uh, guys are. What I want to mention real quick, you know, for producers of the year, uh, those guys. Absolutely, Chen from Big Brown Breakdown also, and from the Fighter and the Kid. Uh, The only other honorable mentions for most consistent I would throw out is stuff like obviously Heavy Hands. Yep. Obviously, Sure Dog, yep. uh, Rogan, although not consistent, but consistent in putting out content. Uh, uh, let's see, Anakin Florian and the out uh, the the Outsiders with Josh Gross and Jeff Sherwood. I feel like uh, all those were up there, but we'll go ahead and move on to our next segment. Most prolific clip artists. All right. So our mo- most prolific clip artist, which I should specify what this means. I just like that phrasing, so I went with that. But this is the person, uh, or the podcast, I should say, that we use the most clips from or we enjoyed the most sound clips of. Uh, so, Chris, why don't you start us off with who you think was the most prolific <coughs> clip artist of 2017 when it comes to MMA podcasts. I have two. It's kind of a tie. Uh, the first one is uh, Ero Hawani's MMA Hour. Uh, Solid. One, I, Solid I, I, I will mention this again. Just as as fucking, just like one or two guests alone. Like Ally Quinta alone, or Nate Diaz alone. Ally Quinta was great when he said, you know what, Dana, fuck you. Fuck the whole UFC and go fuck your mother or something like that. He said something like that. But uh, uh, there was one episode in particular, and we will mention this in a, a later. Well, I'll mention it as an honorable mention, but I think it, someone on Reddit mentioned it. I think it was episode, I'm dyslexic right now. It's 378 or 386, something like that. Mike Perry was on there. He's been on there multiple times this year. But yep. he was so fucking high. <laughs> he couldn't even just he is answering questions but he was just like spacing out so much it's like when Charles Bennett showed up yeah on that show. what I'll do is after this is maybe for next week's episode I'll try to find what episode it is and we'll, we'll play, play a clip above it but yeah I just remember I remember the episode too like you can see Mike Perry he's just like this he's on Skype <laughs> and he's so fucking high he has no idea what's going on so That's that was hilarious. a clip uh, my other one which is unfortunately now a defunct non-existent podcast Sean Funky and the Baddest Man that segues in perfectly because mine is also Sean Funky and the Baddest Man I listened to that multiple times they always had very good clips courtesy of Ben uh, Askren or Joe Joe Warren between the two of them they are just constant clip machines they say fucked up things but yeah it's just absolutely incredible they are fantastic Uh, man 
Joe Warren talking about uh, his experience in Ryzen when he he was commentating and made a joke about an earthquake that the sumo guy caused. He made a joke about Mirko no, Krokop's daughter, daughter right? and walking and thinking his it was his, his, someone he was dating and calling Mirko a pedophile on accident. Just fucking incredible. It's It's exactly why that show should still exist. And uh, dear God, I hope someone picks it up. But that will come up again later. Uh, and then our by the numbers pick for most prolific clip artist is a th- actually a three way tie, which is pretty rare. Oh shit! We didn't have a lot of ties, but this is a three way tie between Sean Funky and the Baddest Man, the MMA Vivisection, and the MMA Depressed Us. Okay. Because both of those actually had a bunch of clips that we played, uh, and I actually have pulled a clip uh, for a- another segment later that you'll hear. For the uh, MMA depressed us, but man, just a great breakdowns and uh, super fun. Other honorable mentions, obviously Joe Rogan experience, yep. uh, especially the fight companions, <clears throat> uh, the Fortnite, which you mentioned, uh, MMA outsiders with uh, Josh Gross and uh, yeah, I'll say one clip. I'm, I remember it was before Colby Covington did his infamous speech against uh, when he defeated Demi Maya. Yep. He went on MMA Fortnite. Yep. And he's like, how is it in Brazil now? He's like, you know what, Ariel? This place is a fucking dump. He's like, just trash everywhere. People trying to rob me. And it's just going on and on and on and yeah. on. And, I mean, yeah, it's an act. We get it. But it was kind of funny. For sure, for sure. Uh, and then uh, the only other honorable mentions I had written down was uh, stuff like Jordan Breen Show and Punch Drunk Sports, which both had some some wild fucking clips here and there, but uh, not nearly as consistent as some of the uh, other ones we mentioned. So uh, we will go ahead and move on to our next topic. Most underrated MMA podcast. All right, so up next for most underrated show. Chris, what do you got? Even though this is a fairly new show, I have Talk and Talker. I, I I totally buy that as underrated because I feel like nobody talks about the fact that DC has a podcast except for like this, every like six weeks on a broadcast. They'll be like, oh, DC said about so-and-so on his podcast. Trust that, me, they'll, they'll say it on Reddit. But they know, it, yeah. But yeah. they don't fucking ever say it's from his podcast. And no one links and anything. This is the thing. Yeah. A lot of people don't like Daniel Cormier. I know that's a thing. It only, is. Okay, it only because the UFC posted today... Are you excited for 220? And it showed a picture of DC with the belt on, right? So I went and looked at the comments. Of course, stupid, ignorant motherfuckers are like, oh, that's not the real belt. You didn't beat John Jones. And you see someone with logical sense going, oh, well, John Jones did steroids, so fuck you. You know, he's a champ. And, and fuck see, him more specifically. Yeah, and you'll be like, oh, well, paper champ, you know. Oh, well, Tyron Woodley's a paper champ because, it, no, 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 no. If you vacate the belt, that means you quit. That's like saying I quit my job. Well, also so cheating if someone, means yeah, like, yeah, and cheating quit. is even worse. Like no, 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 no. That means you're quitting your fucking job, yeah. and that means the the championship is open. So I just want to get that out there for all you fucking haters on social media that hide. You that's know, right. That's Which are clearly is. none of our fans. Yeah. But, Either uh, way, that's my know. most underrated show. Daniel Cormier is a fucking treasure when it comes to podcasts. For sure. The dude is so charismatic, and he loves Super funny. fucking with his co-host, especially Nick, not, he, not he Nick Swimmer, more or less everybody. Nick Swimmer's friend, Dennis Rodriguez, yeah. who got fucked by the Hot Wings Challenge, which we will Which mention will, later. will come up later, uh, yeah. But yeah, this show is so goddamn fun to listen to. Yeah. When he has guests, which unfortunately is rare, but I I get it. Uh, it's so fucking great. Holy yeah. shit. This show, is, this show is awesome. And like Daniel talking to Habib about yep. like fucking like asking Habib leading questions knowing what the answer's gonna be and already laughing about it. Like uh, that show's yeah, real him good. Yeah, I'm going DC. You're like a brother to me but yeah. I did defeat I did defeat my older brother yeah. defeat you in my, the My brother beat you <laughs> yeah. when you fought to him and I was like oh shit. <laughs> Fucking great. Anyway, uh, so I will move on to my most underrated show of 2017, which is the MMA Depressed Us. Uh, Connor Rebo, Shane Simon, and Evil Greg Jackson on Twitter, who is also known as uh, his actual name, Phil McKenzie, are hilarious. And on weeks when there aren't MMA podcasts, they go through and they watch old bad fights. They pick a good bad fight, a bad bad fight, 
in a fight that was supposed to be better. And they watched him, and holy shit, the show was constantly one of my favorites. I was gonna say I didn't, I never asked you this yet, but did they do <laughs> Woodley Thompson too yet? Yeah. How did they hate that? Oh, they were so bored by the end. Yeah. It you, by the end of the episode, out on that one actually you do get depressed yeah. by the end of the episode. Because you know that's Cause one of those everyone fights. Everyone stops talking and everyone that's just goes. One of those fights. I just wish they do something. Oh no, because that's <laughs> one of those fights. Either fighter probably could have taken it if they actually give a fuck. Well, it's about the second one, he did take it, but... Well, at the end. But I'm saying, like, Wonder Boy, if he gave a fuck, he probably could have let his hands fall. Yeah. Not saying he would have knocked out Woodley, but he could have won on points. Like, well, and by the end of on. an episode with already having watched two bad fights, then watching the full five rounds of that, yeah. you're like, oh, God, just someone do anything, please. Oh, no, because remember, rough. I think me and you but said, if, if, Woodley, like a... if Woodley didn't land that shit the fifth round... I think you kind of give that shit to Thompson out of yeah, I mean, it's close. <laughs> yeah, I had a 2-2 two, two going into that. Yeah, like, or, or, well, I, no, 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 you call it a draw, but they wouldn't do that. I mean, realistically, it was a draw if that fifth round shit, that's why that self-fight is so depressing, literally, yeah, so. for sure, and, like, that's uh, such a testament to that show that they're intentionally watching bad fights, but it's a great show. Like, it's it's a great testament for uh, how, how solid that is, uh, and how solid their commentary is on those fights. Uh, speaking of which, they did Bench Kohea versus Holly Holm on this most recent one this week. See, which is it fucking depressed great. them until the end, which was fantastic. Yeah. Oh, they also, on this week's episode, did Pat Cummins versus John Volante and Kevin uh, Randleman versus uh, Boss Rutten, which is an all time infamous uh, bad fight. And they've also done all the bad ones that you think of. Uh, like uh, Anderson Silva versus Nick Diaz. <laughs> that's kind. Of, I kind of think no, that. I, I think don't think they've done bad. that. They did Nick Diaz G- GSP though. Yeah, but do you know what I'm saying? Like recently, or no, maybe they did Diaz Condit. I think they did Diaz Condit. Yeah, I don't remember. Fucking bad too. Anyway, uh, just a great show, and I always love it. Uh, honorable mentions for most underrated show. This is basically just a list of shows that I think people sleep on. Punch Drunk Sports. Uh, real quick with Mike Swick. Talk and Talker we mentioned, Collapse MMA, the Aussie and Fancy Breakdown. Yep, I mention. easily could have picked this as my choice. Uh, the only reason I didn't is because I, it's so young in the year. Like they've only started doing it within the last couple months, but they're always fantastic. Uh, the Outsiders, Josh Gross and Jeff Sherwood, again, easy nominee for this. MMA Roadshow, Morning Wood Show. If they would have done more episodes, I know, unfortunately, I get it. Tyron is recovering now from shoulder surgery. It's kind of a limited basis, but when they do record, great podcast. Dude, if they would have had more episodes, that probably would have been in my top ten this year. It would have. No, it would have for sure. But I checked, and they only, they've only done like four or five episodes this year, which is like, yeah. I can't I can't include you if it's that they, limited. <laughs> they honestly do one like every two or three months. Like. Well, it depends on like how schedules are working. Yeah, and like, I, I get it. Well, especially with Dean being a corner man for so many fucking fights oh, yeah, a year, like too. Yeah, uh, Nunez, he's the coach. And Tyron's got the new TMZ yeah. show, and it's yeah, like, it's all thing. Beat, yeah. But uh, yeah, Three Amigos also, if I did it, and Press Row all deserve shout outs, too. But, uh, yeah, MMA to Press is great. And uh, which one did you pick? For underrated? Yeah. But I talked about Talking Talker. That's right. Also, super. That was all, like, easily on my list. Yeah. That yeah. that show jumped ahead so quickly in one year. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. Uh, which will come up again later. But we will go ahead and get into our next topic. Best non-fighter guest. All right, our award for best non-fighter guest on an MMA podcast, which I should clarify, really means best non-active fighter guest. Uh, so guys like if you if Phil Baroni guests on a show and I think he's hilarious, that counts as a non-fighter guest because Phil Baroni is not actively fighting, or at least I hope not anytime soon. Uh, and we'll go ahead and get into the picks, but I wanted to clarify that. Like, Robin Black has fought before. I'm not counting Robin Black as a fighter guest. Eve Edwards has fought before. I'm not counting Eve Edwards as a fighter guest. They're more of like a analysis personality kind of guest nowadays. Yep, exactly. Matt Sarah, I wouldn't count as a fighter guest, for example. So, uh, Chris, what is your best non-fighter guest of 2017. I actually would pick Matt Sarah because he's hilarious. He's great. He, and he should be my pick. 
but I'm going with Joey Diaz. Yeah. <laughs> because like when he's on, he's Joey, like, yes, Joey uh, Diaz the best. He just like just the memes that he creates that Joe Rogan shares. Like you know, uh, who's that guy? Steve bitch. Steve Chambiopich. Yeah, or when he uh, when Connor fought Eddie Alvarez uh, yeah. almost two years ago in the was, he's like. Oh, Conor McGregor, pack eight lunches, motherfucker. You know, that kind of shit. He just makes all those legendary comments. And Joey's had some incredible appearances on MMA Junkie, too, since he's friends with those guys. That's right. So he's got on a lot of those, and it's always funny. They always love Uncle Joey. Uh, And Joey always treats him like his little, like, uh, Mexican nephews. I feel like every time he comes on, which is hilarious. They're like, oh, dog, you were from L.A. We get it, dog. Hey. But I'm saying this Conor McGregor cocksucker, he ain't got shit for Nick Diaz. I saw him with the weigh-ins. He ain't got shit. Yeah, the fact that he so. calls, like, I can't wait when Joe has it, because Joe is definitely going to have him on his MMA show or his regular jam. I hope so. I don't know if he will, but I hope so. I does. hope so for the Steve Ngannou fight, because the fact that he calls him Steel Pitch, yeah, and the own- fact that he called Francis Ngannou Francis Mabagabalu, or something like that. He called him Mabagabalu. Some just ridiculous. It sounds about right. I love it, and uh, yeah. I am 100% yeah. on board Re- that Realistically, pick. I think it's Matt Serra. Because Matt Serra is probably the smart pick. Yeah. He's but. he's my real pick, but I, I love Joey Diaz. But yeah, Matt Serra, as far as his energy and going, Jimmy! You know, just yeah. nerding out. For Anything sure. Marvel Comics, this dude was going around yeah. for like 10 minutes. And I get it. Like, I don't mind it, but because I'm a nerd too with that shit. But, you know, he's hilarious. And Matt's a great guest. Like, Matt's get, like Matt's guest that he gets spots that he's on, like, Anakin Florian and shit like that. Oh, yeah. Always fantastic. So Very fucking knowledgeable in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Holy shit. For sure. And uh, we actually have a little bit of a theme going. We got a little bit of a Dana White looking for a fight theme going because my best non-active fighter guest is Dean Thomas. Yep. So, which it's is also great. Hundred percent on board with your. Uh, we got a we got a hell of a theme. And you know what that reminds me of actually, the. Uh, I mean, we'll do the best episode later. Yeah. This honorable mention kind of premature <laughs> when they had Dave and Alan Greer on there. Yeah. Did he fight someone? Who Hold unfiltered. Did, did he had someone who had a who had a disability. <laughs> I don't think so. He had like no, someone had like a disability. Remember, he fought him and he, he felt bad. I swear to God. That oh, was you talked yeah. about it on the episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah someone had like an actual disability. He's like, why the fuck am I fighting this guy? He's like, I feel like a piece of shit. Right, but David Alvarez never fought had, though. No, remember he said he trains in a gym. Right. Oh no, no, he was a guy who uh, he was like a stockbroker or something. No, who came no. In. No, no. What it was is it was a stockbroker or something, and then he found out the guy had cancer. Like, That's what it was. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I forgot like, about that. Oh my god. <laughs> Because <laughs> they're like, oh, yeah, someone's telling like, hey, David, uh, I know you haven't really fought, but just go all against this guy. And he found the guy had yeah. like, stage three cancer. Yeah, he's terrible. like, oh, I just got over cancer. <laughs> he's my first survivor. day back in the gym. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, never saw that guy again. I still feel terrible about it. Anyway, <laughs> that Chris said we did that horrible, horrible, uh, <laughs> horrible reference. Uh, so our by the numbers pick. So based on the... Uh, the non-active fighter guests we picked that for like that we mentioned in shows it is a tie between Dean Thomas and Robin Black. Oh, really? Which uh, Robin Black actually had some great episodes, like uh, the Joe Rogan fight companion that he did in January with Eddie Bravo and uh, Joe and Brendan Schaub is fantastic. I went back and rewatched it; very good. Um, also, our other honorable mentions, uh, mostly based on the numbers, Dana White was actually up there. Uh, Edgy Bra, of course, Eddie Bravo. Uh, Eve Edwards, Boss Rutten, Kareem Zidane, and uh, I threw in Danny Brown because of his... Uh, Wait, which podcast was he on? Uh, Eddie, uh, Joe, uh, Joey Diaz's podcast. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Talk oh, about it MMA. reminds me of when Action Bronson was on there. Talk about going to brothels. That too. And doing a bunch of psychedelics. See, and Danny Brown talked more MMA with Joey Diaz, which yeah, is why he made yeah. it on the list. Otherwise, action would have as well with both Joe and uh, and uh, Joey. But... Lee Sayak, cocksuck. The fuck, cocksuck. Uh, speaking of which, we'll go ahead and jump into the best fighter guest. Let's hear that segment. Best fighter guest. 
All right, Chris, who you got for your best fighter guest of Mine's 2017? Mine's kind of a tie. It's kind of like a 1A, 1B I kind of could thing. see that with a lot so of these dudes. My 1A is Dominic Cruz. Mm. Dominic Cruz specifically was fantastic Joe on, Rogan. on Fortnite, and the JRE episode was yeah. absolutely great. Dominic Cruz, as you know, uh, commentates when he's not fighting or in training camp. Yep. Absolutely insanely high fight IQ. This guy knows what the fuck he's talking about. Always super insightful. Very, yeah, ton very, of me- analysis, very methodical about ton his of opponents. Study. Uh, he's my number one. My one B this year. You've heard him a bunch of times this week. Listen to it was Colby Covington. We get it. He's playing the heel, uh, kind of, but he's entertaining. I'm sorry. I think he's hilarious. I follow him on Instagram. Uh, he loves his little insults, and I think he's funny. I get it. Like the thing is, uh, that one podcast I talked to you about today—that's a bannable podcast. Right. Whatever the fuck it was called, I already forgot the name. Thank God. I actually literally forgot the name. That yeah. was terrible, misogynist, I, I, and xenophobic. I know they're loved, but though. Loud they mouth. didn't. Me- yeah, fuck. Now I remember it. I'm just kidding. But they did mention um, Colby Covington. Like, if you really believe he thinks Brazil's filthy animals, then you're insane. But it's true. It's clearly a fucking act. He's even admitted it before. Oh, sure. We all know that. He's just being. He's in pro wrestling, literally. What was it? Impact with D- uh, Dan Lambert. Yeah. Right? I like Colby Covington. Do I think he's a shithead? Yeah, he is a fucking dick, I'm sure. I don't know him personally. That's why I can't. You know, you can't judge people personally. But yeah, he's doing his thing. He's playing the villain. He's doing a great job at it. Uh, and when he was on the episode of Fortnite multiple times, holy fuck. Oh, yeah, he was on twice in three weeks. That's how much Ariel wanted him on there. Yeah. You know what? He really made an impression. For he sure. really did, and he really got a name out there. So, Dominic Cruz is 1A for me, and Coley Covington's 1B. That for is the a hell of he 1A and 1B. Yeah. Uh, in, in honor how about of, you? In honor of how you're doing it, I'm going to do a 1A and 1B, too. Fuck yeah. Fuck it. Uh, so, my 1A is, of course, Derek Lewis. Uh, Derek Lewis. Fuck, that's a good point. Between the, the <laughs> fucking good point. interviews of him saving people in Houston. And Dana White being... Uh, um, what did he say? He, didn't Derek Lewis say, I live in a white neighborhood or That's something right. like that? A so lot I, of, or no, he's like, if I live in a gated community, then Dana's okay because he's white. Or also, like all of the Ronda Rousey getting married content that you've heard yep. on Derek Lewis was this year. Like, he's been on fire. Uh, and he or is always great. if his great. rib isn't hurt, he could fuck his wife. That's right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, him retiring three times. It's all been this year. It's great. I highly recommend that. And then my 1B, which is really probably my more realistic pick, is Ben Askren, uh, who has also been just lighting everyone on fire on every interview, uh, whether it be the Chell Sun in episode 300, or whether it be Ariel Hawani, or I, I anyone. Will, I will say All this fantastic. 1C, uh, or honorable mention, Mike fucking Perry, when he made the Mike Perry was almost one of my picks, yeah. You know why? His first fucking interview he did with Ariel, so I was like, hey, Mike, why do you call yourself Platinum? Well, Platinum is, a real, is pretty much like the most valuable metal, I guess, yep. besides gold. And I think if you need to talk to God, you need to make your satellites out of Platinum. So, And I was like, dude, I'm sold. Yeah, <laughs> it's up there. Uh, and then our by the numbers pick is Jorge Masvidal. Who, like, easily could have been one of the guys I picked. I would have picked host, him probably if it wasn't Because it's ho-slapping season, right? Yeah. He's been lighting everyone on fire fucking all year. Uh, just don't ask Jimmy Norton to do an impression. Dude, Jorge's, like, just the two episodes he did with Joey Diaz alone are fucking fire. Oh, was he on church? Yeah, he was oh, on church sure. two go, different I times. Go back and watch that. He's just, like... Talking with Joey about Cuban food and shit, and how crazy bitches are in Florida. <laughs> you which place you would it's like? Great. It's a bar- it's a brand new place in downtown San Diego with a gas lamp. It's called Havana, nineteen twenty. I did a Ooh, bunch of write ups on it for Pacific Magazine. Looks fucking great. And you know who Hell works yeah. there? You know Max. Oh no way, Max he works there as a bartender. Hell yeah. Yep. Well, I'm just telling you right now. I know where I'm going to get some yep. rum it's too. It looks fucking bomb. Hell yeah. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, uh, any uh, any honorable mentions you had? I had a couple. Mine is pretty much Mike Perry. Yeah, I had Mike Perry. Uh, Kevin Lee was up there. He's great. On our, on our list of who we mentioned, TJ Dillashaw. He was good. He was consistently really good. Really good. Uh, Chael Sonnen, of course. Yep. Mickey Gall on Punch Drunk especially, but overall... Uh, DC, of course, was great. Woodley was great. And Ooh, Brian, Bri- T City, Brian Ortega, on, uh, uh, with Big Brown Breakdown. Yeah, Big yeah. Brown Breakdown, and along with uh, MMA Fortnite. I mean, not MMA Fortnite. MMA or UFC Unfiltered. Yep. 
Uh, yeah, he had a couple good episodes, so some fun picks for sure. Uh, so we will go ahead and keep moving on since we have so much fucking content this week. Let's get into our next segment. Best fight card previews. All right, our best fight card previews. Chris, who are you leaning towards? If you guys don't know, this is who we thought broke down fight cards the best this year. Like, who did the best previews for, like, the weekend's fights? Whether it be uh, just, like, an episode only devoted to breaking it down or whether it's an episode where they covered a lot of the, the upcoming card. Uh, I just wanted to include everyone who gave really solid breakdowns throughout the year. Because uh, there there's been a lot of them. Like, uh, there's a couple shows that really stand out for this guy. So, I'll say right off the bat, this isn't on the list because this guy only puts out videos once every couple months, I think. Uh, it's a YouTube channel by the name of BJJ Scout. Yeah. A bunch of, he does a fantastic job as far as breaking down style matchups. Yep. If you ever want to learn He does a lot styles, more recaps than previews, yeah, but he, he does, does do yeah. some previews. If yeah. you ever want to learn how styles match up against each other, BJJ Scout is the name on YouTube. He does a great job. Uh, Luke for, Thomas shouts him out a ton. He too. does. Yeah. He's like, I don't know who this guy is, but he's so good. Yeah. And, I, and we all agree. Uh, as far as my best fight card preview for this year, 2017, would be heavy hands. Uh, Connor Rebush and Pat Wyman do a fantastic job yeah. at just at analyzing the, uh, every fight on each card. Uh, they do. Or if not every fight, at least main card. Fights. Yeah. yeah, main card stuff as far as you know style matchups. And their Patreon actually a lot of times they cover the lower. Yeah, stuff, you know as so. far as who is this guy? Who did this guy fight last time? Who's his opponent now? You know what's his what's his main bread and butter? How does this match up against that? Yeah, and they do such a great job at breaking it down and kind of like you know they reference other people's opinions as well. And yep. every single time I wanted to get a fight preview, I'd always be going back to heavy hands. And they always they do, do their homework. Yeah. yeah, and like they do a really good yeah they do a really good job of not only watching a lot of tape, but finding like specific key things they think will be factors in fights, uh, which actually leads me in pretty well to my fight card preview, which is the MMA Viva section, which is uh, one half of the Heavy Hands it podcast. Is. Connor Rebush, uh, who does it alongside Zane Simon, and Connor and Zane go through each week and give their picks for every fight. On a uh, on the card uh, on the UFC cards and I, that is one of if not my go that is my go to uh, every time if if there's ever a fight card that I'm get excited for I always want to hear their picks on who they have uh, I generally like write down my picks ahead of time but so I'm not too influenced by it or I'll like listen to their picks along with a hundred other people's picks or whatever. But I always appreciate, like, their reference points because they'll point out small details in, like, people's styles that they think could be a factor that I, like, will either weigh heavy, heavily or not, depending on how I think it actually applies to the fight. But it's always interesting getting their take. They do more tape study than anyone else in the fucking game by far. I mean, they're doing tape study on the fucking fight past prelims every single week, which deserves respect because no one else fucking does it. I mean, there is, like, maybe one or two other people, but no one does it as thoroughly and as consistently as the MMA Viva section guys uh, do, Connor and Zane, and I just, uh, it is absolutely, it was hands down my pick. It was also hands down the pick by the numbers. Uh, by the numbers, I think Viva section got it, but, like, an easy five or six mentions above everything else that did a preview, so... Really impressed by them and uh, super hyped on it. Other uh, honorable mentions for this category, Aussie and Fancy Breakdowns. Yep. Which, if they hadn't been around longer, might have ended up on the uh, as the by-the-numbers pick. I love their breakdowns. They also do a ton of tape study. Um, and they all, they cover a lot more of the female fights in depth, which you don't get a lot. It's pretty cool. And they've also trained with a lot of people they talk about. So it's, uh, it's kind of an interesting... Kind of an interesting combo. Uh, but I really enjoy Laura Senko and Megan Anderson on that. Uh, care Don't Care is always fun. They go through and give their picks on whether they care oh, about fights or don't. Eugene S. Robinson and... Uh, yep, Eugene S. Robinson and Kid Date, although sometimes Kid Date gets subbed in for 
uh, by, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I forget dude's name. It's the other uh, Bloody Elbow guy that's uh, super cool and was on the most recent one. He's great. Um, some other honorable mentions, of course, the Sherdog Roundtable, which, again, I would have put maybe as my pick for this. Uh, however, the Sherdog Roundtable has not been as consistent since uh, some stuff we'll get into later about Sherdog falling off this year. However, uh, the Sherdog Roundtable is going to come back on the Between Rounds Patreon, where they're go- TJ is going to start giving out I uh, some amount of money. I think it was a hundred bucks to whoever gets the most picks right for those uh, for those episodes that they do, which will be cool because they will get like I, people actually taking real picks on yeah. that. And uh, whoever gets the most right gets that hundred bucks. That'll be a lot of fun, uh, and I'm excited for that going forward. Also, some other mentions: Three Amigos do great picks, uh, which they do every week, and probably don't get enough love for. And Submission Radio too. Yep. Submission Radio also does a cool thing of asking for guest picks, which you hear a lot on other podcasts, like probably via time constraints or whatever. But a lot of times they'll be like, "Oh, hey, so and so, who we have on? Who do you think for?" This weekend's cards. Yeah, Casper and Dennis, their shows are usually, usually at least about two hours and two, 15 minutes long. Yeah, two like or that. three. Two and a quarter. Yeah, so, I, and I, I actually like long shows. I'd rather you do a long show and me want to skip some of it than not have enough content. But then again, uh, that probably shows in how the fuck our episodes go, huh? Yeah, right? <laughs> ah. All right, so... Uh, we will go ahead and move on to, oh boy, we got three more and then we got a break. Uh, so our best fight card recaps. Let's go ahead and hear that intro. Best fight card recaps. All right, so for our best fight card recaps, these are the podcasts that we thought in 2017 best recapped whatever fight happened the weekend before. Um, this could be anything from like the sixth round from Zane Simon and Bloody Elbow, who do like an immediate recap similar to like Luke Thomas or Sherdog. Anywhere from that to like uh, Heavy Hands or anyone else who just later in the week gives a recap of like what happened and kind of break down why people won certain fights. Because uh, I want to I want to clarify that these all of these categories are very subject as fuck and kind of just all on a whim, uh, giant bomb style. And if you haven't heard the Giant Bomb Game of the Year awards, check that out. You'll now understand how fucking flimsy all these categories are because they are. Uh, so, Chris, why don't you give us your best fight card recap for the year? Mine will go to Luke Thomas's Monday Morning Analyst. Yeah. Um, that's that's a hard one It's for his podcast pick. format. Um, I love what he has to say. Um, he always just kind of, he has a lot of references. He, he basically goes through the entire card uh, from the bottom to the top. He'll just start from the prelims up. Luke always has his notes together. While this isn't the live chat that he does on Wednesday, this is kind of his chance to kind of just gather his own thoughts, uh, his his own points he puts together. And I really like how organized he puts he puts everything and how, how gelled everything is together. And as far as written format, I didn't mean to shout this out, but I have to shout him out. Jack Slack uh, on yeah. Vice. Uh, even though technically they got rid of Vice Fightland, he still has his own website. Yep. Uh, fights gone by a written format. Jack Slack does a fantastic job. If you don't listen to his podcast, his written articles are basically just that, but in written word. And he and does a great job. Is... As, he does a fucking fantastic job as far as his written format. That's why I want to shout him out. That's it's kind of like a double a double thing. But yeah. so yeah, for podcasts for me, it's Luke Thomas's. Monday more landless and for written format it's Jack Slack's fights gone by hundred percent. I hear ya. Uh, yeah, no, that that's those are both great picks. Uh, for my best fight card recap, I have beat down after the bell. Good choice. Which was formerly on Sherdog sure and it, like I mentioned, is now on uh, Patreon on the Between Rounds Patreon. Uh, just mainly because hearing 
TJ DeSantis and Jordan Breen talk about a fight card where Jordan Breen is still drunk from having curled with people in because he lives in Canada. So he was out curling and got trashed. And now he has to talk for the next two, like hour and a half like, about... Like curling like all day. Like, no, uh, like curling like, like, yeah, yeah, like yeah, the yeah. Canadian yeah, yeah, shitty yeah, yeah, sport yeah, 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 yeah. in the ice. And he's outside in the, in the fucking snow trash talking about a card. Or like him hanging out with Jeff Sherwood and Jeff Sherwood talking about a card that like Jeff Sherwood has not had to talk about a card in forever. Uh, or or just even the episodes with TJ Sanders and uh, uh, and. Anthony Walker hanging out talking about like just recaps I they are just something about sure dog recaps makes a fight card feel official to me I don't know if it's just because it's what I've been used to coming up in MMA that like after a card you just turn on the sure dog radio network because they're gonna have for like a big pay-per-view they're like after Ronda Rousey got knocked out First thing I did is just pull up my phone and turn on the fucking sure dog recap. Yeah. Or like any of these big cards. That's the first thing I ever did was turn pull up the, pull up sure dog and turn on the recap that TJ's putting on because it's always it's it's just always so poignant and like it's a good wind down from like you're trash. You went and saw a fucking crazy card. You went and got a burrito, and now you're hanging out, and you're like, all right, I got to wind down from this shit, because I got work in the morning or whatever. So uh, I I've, I just always thought that was a good fit, and uh, I'm excited to see how much more of them that they end up doing for uh, the Between Rounds Patre- or for the Between Rounds Patreon, because I have been very happy with it so far. Uh, and then our By the Numbers pick is Heavy Hands for a uh, recap. Which I understand. Heavy Hands does great recaps on fights. Oh, yeah. Like, they're not, like, the night of, which I think is deceptive, because a lot of times you think recap, you think, like, the night of or the day after. They'd be too annoying to have to pull on. Well, and, like, heavy the way Heavy Hands formats their episodes, they kind of pick, like, hey, are we either going to, like, recap this old fight card really heavy, or are we going to preview this new one really heavy? I forgot, we'll they, do a release, combination they of both. release their new content, like, every Wednesday. like Monday, Yeah, once a week, they, yeah. yeah. Uh, and yeah, they just like by the numbers, they always had like uh, the amount of episodes that they had that were recaps that we mentioned were a super high number, yeah, like by a big chunk, kind of like the uh MMA Viva section for previews. So, pretty hyped on that, and it's good to see them get that love. I'm glad we shouted them out that much. Uh, and other ones we mentioned, Fights Going By came up, yep. Uh, the Luke Thomas Results Show came up, which is fairly new. Uh, it's the show that Luke Thomas does immediately after fight cards nowadays. Uh, Monday morning analysts, of course. Uh, Knuckle Up is a good one that we don't That's give right. enough love to. Uh, the MMA Road Show and a half episodes, as John Morgan would say. They are always great. And uh, Robin Black actually does some pretty good post fight podcasts, especially like the ones where he. We like hung out where, with Horace. I was gonna say, is that the way he drinks a beer with the fighters? Well, he like went out like got. Excuse me, breakfast with Jorge Masvidal, like, the day after his fight with uh, Cerrone and shit like that, I think. Yeah. Or maybe it wasn't Cerrone. Maybe, maybe it was, uh, No, I think it was Cerrone. Maybe. Something maybe like that. Maybe it was him or Ellenberger. I think he lost the fight where he went and got breakfast. It was the one after Cerrone. I don't remember who it was. Fuck, I know. Was it in, uh, oh, Maya. Because he lost Maya. Maya. It was yeah, Maya. Yeah. yeah, that's what it was. Uh, but, yeah, great great episodes. And uh, I highly recommend him. So, speaking of great episodes, let's go ahead and jump into our next segment. The best episode of an MMA podcast. All right, up next we got our our picks for best episode of the year. Best episode of an MMA podcast in 2017. This is this was the hard one of the hardest ones to get together. Yeah, like I went through a lot. I actually went through and watched a lot of the episodes I had mentioned as camp misses, um, and I was able to find one eventually. But like, man, it's it's a tough it's tough pickings for sure. Uh, who did you have for your best episode of twenty seventeen? For me, it's a two way tie. I don't know, Understandably. Uh, the first one is Talk and Talker. I don't remember what episode yeah, it is. Yeah, twelve. 
12. They did oh, the, no, 11. I'm they sorry. They did the fucking the hot, smoke eaters, the hot, hot wing wings challenge. challenge. Yeah. Holy shit. Episode this 11, the smoke eaters, hot wings challenge. Dennis Rodriguez, I believe who was. Uh, he didn't know he had an ulcer in his chest. So they did the suicide wings challenge. And the whole time... Didn't go well. You hear DC just laughing because he's Dying idiots. laughing. He's yeah. dying laughing. These idiots are just eating these hot wings and just crying and just sniffling and blowing out snot. And, you, you know, for all you eat, whoever's eaten suicide wings, whether it's, what is it, like a Carolina Reaper or a Ghost Channel. I yeah, believe I, it's I'm all a bitch those, when it yeah. comes to hot wings. Like, they're spicier than hot, so I won't fuck with that. See, I'm not, but, like, uh, also, like, I'm... You're a, psychotic? Well, I'm an so. idiot, yeah. Yeah, like I just eat shit that's too hot and it's great at the time. And then later like habanero, like, I can fuck with as far as like the hot, the hot, and I still will cry. But yeah, I will never try something that says clearly ghost pepper. Oh, I eat. Go- like, I have ghost pepper hot sauce in the fridge. You're crazy. Uh, so, so you just gotta be mild with it. You just gotta just add a small oh, amount. Little, so, you know, yeah. maybe I can fuck with that then. Yeah, we'll see. I'll have to try it again. Don't I'll like make hot re- wings out of it. Yeah, I'll have yeah. to. Yeah, no. See, that's insane. You add like a dot. Oh, you add like a, a quarter size thing onto a plate. No, and no. Dip there was this shit too. That was even way before people were hyped up on ghost pepper. It's called Dave's Insanity Sauce. I remember this is like 10, 15 years ago, and that shit still is hot as fuck. Sounds like it would be. Yeah. Yeah, it's bad. But uh, either way, that's one of them. The other one is the episode of USC Unfiltered when Jim Norton pretends to be Tony Ferguson. That was really and good. Fucking Matt Sarah buys it the whole time. Matt Sarah oh, still feels weird about God. Tony. Because he's like, all right, Matt, I'm going to go to the bathroom. And he's gone for like 15 minutes. And it's like, all right, who's this on the line? Is this Tony? Okakui, is this you? And he's like, uh... Yeah, Matt, this is me. How you doing? You know, it's just like the whole yeah. time. All right, next question, Matt. You know, I don't care. Uh, I mean, I don't care about that. What's next? Yeah, what's next? I'm going to talk about my phone. Don't waste my time. That was amazing. In the fact well, that- I'll let you go, El Kikoli. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I don't mean to be rude, but, you know, I'm trying to answer. You're answer like, you don't want to talk to, to me, El yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that, that's why that's so fucking it's great. Really so good. For me, those two episodes are a tie. Uh, how about you, man? I know you got. Some, there's, I mean, there's a lot of good material this year. That's fantastic. I will actually, uh, I will intro my clip by or my first pick or my pick for best episode by uh, playing clip of it. So here we go. We're getting Ryan Couture looking reasonably wide eyed as always. <laughs> getting reasonably startled. Yeah. Ryan Couture looking like. He stepped through whatever, like he just walked through a door and expected to wind up in a bed, bath, and beyond. <laughs> and this is the scene that's confronted yeah. him. He's like, what the fuck? Where am I? So, somebody just like, he stepped through a door and somebody just handed him the shirt and the glove. And was like, <laughs> <laughs> he was wearing like a short dress shirt with a tie and it was like, here's a tap out shirt, go fight. <laughs> did you guys ever see, did you guys ever see like Quantum Leap? Like, the the, t- the TV series where the dude would like teleport through time and end up in like different people's bodies. <laughs> like, maybe he just like that's the beginning of this episode. <laughs> he just combines himself walking through the walking through the the uh, the entrance for Strike Force Mark Quat versus Zafadi. Ryan Couture it would actually be a very good, well trained, well conditioned actually quite competent fighter except yeah. at the moment he's about to fight every fight somebody quantum leaps into his body and they're just like and they're, they're always they're always slight like you can see there's a look of calm on ryan couture's face they're always slightly relieved when like through very helpful exposition one of their cornermen says as you know you are the son of randy couture one of the best mma fighters ever and they think all right okay i'm pretty good yeah. at this i've got i've got a shot the fight is always a disappointment after that point. Yeah, is that is there, uh, there's a reason why he always seems to be mu- muttering to some invisible guy, <laughs> like whilst in the middle of the fight. All right, so that was my clip for best new show, which was the Maymac MMA Vivid Depressed Us, which is uh, Connery Bush, Zane Simon, and uh, Phil McKenzie talking about. The shit show that was destined to be Mayweather McGregor 
And in accordance with that, they watched a bunch of shitty crossover MMA to boxing fights, including Butterbean versus some dude. They watched uh, Randy James Couture, Tony. James Tony. God damn it. They watched, uh, who was it? It was uh, Ryan Couture versus KJ Noons, which was the one you just heard the clip from, which was fucking incredible. <laughs> Uh, and they were talking about how Ryan Couture gets quantum leaped into every time he walks into the cage, and that's why it looks so surprised and scared, but still yeah, confident. Yeah. I just thought it was a, it's a great it was a, it's a great episode. Uh, also, the, uh, Connor at one point in that episode when they're talking about Maymac, one hundred percent says all Floyd's gonna do is walk forward and let connor try and throw all everything he has in the first few rounds so he can time it all and then he's just gonna piece him apart and finish him in the next two (laughs) he like literally word for word breaks down how that fight's gonna happen and they're all real shitty and depressed on it like they should be uh and i just feel like they deserve some credit for calling that out way ahead of time yeah that's great i mean they were always one of the most dismissive of it and that he they called how it was gonna happen and they watched a bunch of hilarious shitty MMA and boxing matchups in MMA. Oh, we don't know how many times this year we kept talking about the one fight we're not going to talk about all year until it had to happen. Oh, I'm sure it was enough. And by the way, that'll come up again in my skip for this year. Yeah. So we'll get to that in a bit. But uh, some honorable mentions for best episode. Oh, wait, I forgot to say. I actually have a, a part B for my best episode of all year. Uh, and it's actually a part B and part B two or whatever you want to call it uh press row with kareem zidane jordan breen had a podcast on Sherdog radio network called press row and he had kareem zidane on uh two different times to talk about the kadir off thing remember when hbo did the real sports thing yeah on uh on uh on kadir off and uh jordan breen had kareem on for two of those episodes uh, to basically just break down the whole story and That's talk right. about the fucked up history of it. It's fucking incredible. Uh, that story actually ended up getting some uh, like awards in sports journalism. Uh, not the not the shirt on piece, but obviously the the uh, the Kareem Zidane piece that uh, Real Sports did. So just super impressive and highly highly recommend you check those out. Again, we'll have links in the descriptions. For every one of these, uh, if we don't have it on whatever you're looking at, go to sovpod.com because I'm sure there's like links to how much shit I can link in one fucking place on like YouTube and iTunes and all that. But if you go to sovpod.com or the soundofviolence.com, if you look for the episode notes uh, there, you'll see literally everything. Uh, you'll have all your links all in one place, and I'll try to find ones that work for all the dead shit that we'll mention later. Uh, but the other honorable mentions I wanted to say for best episode, dude, that Luke Thomas watch party for UFC Norfolk where he drank four the locos. Four loco, yeah. That's got to be up there. Punch Drunk Sports, the all things comedy festival where uh, Ari Shafir walks around the uh, walks around the building naked during the episode. That's Bert right. Kreischer tries to have a sprint off in the hallway during it. Yep. Doug Sandhill pees on Ari Shafir. GSP calls in to talk about his drug addiction and how he's going to beat Michael Bisping. Uh, not real GSP, by the way. Uh, I believe Nick Diaz ends up on that episode as well. Also, not real Nick Diaz. Um, yeah, that's right. Collapse MMA had some great episodes like WC17, Halloween Fury 4. Uh, Sean Funky, The Baddest Man's Rise and Recap was really good. Yep. Real quick with Mike Swick, episode 10 with Dana White was very good. And uh, The Church of What's Happening Now, episode 455 with Jorge Masvidal. All, all the contenders, and there's a bunch more that easily could be on that list. Uh, the Robin Black, Joe Rogan fight companion in was January say, was up there. Uh, Joe Rogan's episode uh, with Dominic Cruz was up yeah, there. Yeah, absolutely. Like, there. Oh, do you remember what number it was? So you said nine twenty one. There you go. So yeah, it's it. Uh, there's been a lot of them, uh, and the way too many to shout out, but. Yeah, holy shit! Some great fucking episodes this year, uh, and then we got our bet. We got our last uh, segment before our uh, in memoriam segment. So why don't we jump into the this last segment? Best new show of twenty seventeen. 
All right, Chris. So for best new show, this has been a tough one, man. There's been so many good new podcasts that came out this year. Uh, man, like some of these, like a good half of these podcasts could be in my top 10 of the year. Just on how solid they've been. Uh, who did you go with for your best new show of 2017? For me, even though it's super new, Joe Rogan's MMA show. Uh, I went with this Really? One. Yeah. Six episodes in. I know. That's crazy. But, dude, it's been really good, right? Yeah. The format, uh, the Stipe, uh, Mia Chich episode. Stipe, Holy fuck. Did you hear the Eddie Bravo one yesterday? No. Sam, but so, when we're recording this, they put out an Eddie Bravo episode, and it's fucking amazing because it's an Eddie Bravo episode of the Joe Rogan Experience where they actually talk about MMA for, like, 80% of it. Like, whenever there's a pause, Joe goes, so what do you think about... And then he brings up an MMA topic, which is so much better yeah, than, see, like, now the I gotta normal listen to that, But I like the Stipe one, because Stipe, holy fuck, he's such a likable person, so charismatic, sure. so eccentric, very blue-collar guy, still is a firefighter. Two firefighters. Two, two different two, fire, uh, yeah. Yeah, he's two like uh, locations. I think in Cleveland or somewhere near Cleveland, in Cleveland County. Oh, man, they talked about everything. They talked about the fires that are unfortunately still going on, I believe, here in Southern California, L.A. Yep. and San Diego County. Uh, they talked about Joe, his stereotypes against masseuses and acupuncture and steep a D- res- chiropractors respectfully disagreeing he's like I love chiropractors and Joe's like well I don't well and then Joe gives the history of chiropractors which is like fucking giant I'll just say my piece on my dad's side family, my Wait, we did this last week yeah did I tell my grandfather yeah right? yeah we've yeah. talked about this last yeah, week I remember, I but I'll just say again he is yeah, a real right. chiropractor and that shit does work right but a real chiropractor is like being like I'm a real I'll just, I'll just say this you ha- if you have to go to school with it there has to be some right but you know where the all it all comes from, though, right? No, I mean, you can't ask me. I don't fucking know, dude. Oh well, chiropractor like Rogan brings it up on that episode about how it all comes from some dude who just made it up and then like sure. started pushing it to the whatever. Side. Either way, Joe is skeptical on a lot of shit. Understandably, but this this he I loved his show format so far. Oh yeah, no, this is how we had. started talking about cupping last week. I remember oh, yeah. now. That's I right. remember now. That's right. <laughs> Either way, I, that's why I chose this show because he always has good guests on there. And that's that's I legit. I love this show's format. No, I agree. And the most recent one he did with Eddie. Because don't get me wrong, I wanted to say Talk and Talker be best new show, but I already put, close, him, man. I put him as underrated already, so you know. Yeah, they, well, spoiler alert. Oh, wait, we already said that, right? Uh, we did. I know, because I was thinking about that too. There you go. <laughs> uh. I forgot. What were we just talking about? Most underrated. No, no we're, we're sure. on best niche. There we me. go. Underrated was Talking Talker. Yeah, yeah, and the most recent episode Joe did with Eddie was one of the best episodes he's done with Eddie because oh, he shit. actually keeps fo- refocusing the podcast away from conspiracies back to Thank MMA, God. and it's fucking great. It's like, no way edgy it really, like Tower dude, 7, Joe. It, it literally gives me a lot of... Like hope for where that podcast is going to go because now he can have MMA fighters on a yep. podcast where he can actually keep it MMA centered if he wants, which is like, or he can so take it off the rails like see people off the rails. With my hope stuff, is that but. he gets Tony Ferguson on there, man. It maybe, but like Tony is also a guy who like I don't know if Joe wants to have Tony on. Yeah, because it Joe, could probably be really weird too. Well, well, Tony is like a big character, and also it's like too close kind of for Joe. Like if Joe wasn't working with the UFC, maybe he would. But since he's like best friends with Eddie, and Eddie is the trainer of Tony, like starts getting into like what can is we talk like about, what can we talk about? Yeah. Like I feel like it's something you might avoid. Uh, but anyway, we'll keep moving. My my best new show of 2017, hands down, no fucking questions asked, is Collapsed MMA from the Between Rounds Patreon. Holy fucking shit. You guys have heard me talk about this show. It's Jordan Breen. It's TJ DeSantis. It's the last fan MMA podcast, essentially. Yeah. And it's fucking beautiful. They've done K1 Dynamite. They've done UFC 39. They've done... Uh, what is it? WC seventeen Halloween Fury four. They have done. Uh, they're now working on UFC thirteen. Uh, it's just it's fucking awesome. They've done other shows as well. It's it's the best. It's my favorite show. 
I, I never get as hyped as a podca- about a podcast as I get about that. And part of it is probably because I'm a huge mark for Jordan Breen. Like, Jesus Christ, so I miss Jordan Breen's fucking uh, podcast, Two Scoops, that he used to do with J- David Bixon's band. That Patreon right. was great. Fuck it. Two Scoops, don't come on back. No, wait, that's the Bug Juice theme. Uh, <laughs> that's right. I just, I just fucking reference some weird shitty nineties uh, camp show. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's it's so goddamn good. Jordan Brain's the best. TJ Sands is the best. That show's the best. It's the best. Just fucking check it out. Uh, they just recently. It's four dollars a month. You can also. For a number of the episodes, the, the so for these the way they work this show is for Claps MMA the first part at least up until this point I don't know if it still is this way up until this point they've released the first part free which is like the lead up of where they were in their lives when this show happened yeah. where they were working how they saw the show what how old they were who they were with and then the second part is them breaking down fight for fight the entire show. But it's really cool because it kind of sets you in the time period, like where like T.J. Santos is talking about, like, oh, I'm now like working in the f- in the field at this point. I'm doing radio, and I'm covering this at the venue, or I'm covering this on for the website. And Jordan Breen's like, I'm fucking 11 years old when this happened, and I'm like watching. I don't remember seeing this until I'm like pulling a fucking blockbuster DVD or whatever. Or VHS tape in the nineties or whatever it was like. That reminds me, Blockbuster apparently is still a thing in some parts of Canada. I'm, that doesn't surprise me because of the internet connection. Uh, but c- pretty crazy. But yeah, Collapse MMA is just fucking fantastic. I highly recommend, even if you don't subscribe to their Patreon, which I recommend you doing. The Between Rounds Patreon is four dollars a month. It's great, totally worth it. But even if you don't subscribe, go look at the Between Rounds Patreon, which we'll have a link for in the description. And you can listen to the first half of those episodes and just get a feel for how like how cool that show is at and how great that show is at setting a specific point in time. Like the Tough One finale is one of my favorite examples of that. Of like Jordan Breen and TJ DeSantis' breakdown of where they were in their lives during the Tough One finale and like Jordan Breen talking about that black vodka. Oh, it's like God. it's like black colored vodka that he was trying to get because he thought it was super cool. Like it's just what it's so specific and so weird but so cool. Yeah. So I highly recommend checking that out. And then uh Chris, for our by the numbers pick, you know what's fucking crazy? What's that? For our by the numbers best new show it would have been Sean fucking the baddest man if they wouldn't have stopped so early in the year. That's how many times we mentioned it. But by the numbers, because someone else started later in the year but had more episodes out, it's Talking Docker for Best New Show. Fuck yeah. So by the numbers, we mentioned them the most, which understandably, man, they had some fucking amazing episodes. Yeah. And like it would have been, it would have been Sean fucking the baddest man if that episode, if that show would have kept existing. But. Hopefully, I feel like a lot of those shows, when you have a lot of good co-hosts, it really kind of gels things together. Well, and it's one of those things, too, where it's like, it, hopefully they can find a new... Hopefully TJ brings them on board. Fuck, man. Like, I know people have reached out to TJ Santis for bringing them on between rounds, but hopefully yeah, it'd be something it was Askren... Sean, it was Sean Wheelock with Ben Askren and Joe Warren, right? Exactly. So hopefully uh, they get brought on to some kind of something, because that show should exist in the, in the ether... Just so goddamn good. Uh, but some honorable mentions. All of Robin Black's new podcasts. He has like a whole series of new podcasts he does. He has like three different shows. Yeah, they're they're all solid. Uh, if you're into Robin Black's commentary on stuff, real quick with Mike Swick has to be way up there. It's a fucking fantastic show. Uh, Aussie and Fancy Breakdown, of course. You you and I are both big fans of that one. Yep. Uh, your favorite fight. Which is a, uh, I believe it is, shit, I'm going to fuck up his name. I want to say it's David Golden who hosts that podcast, Your Favorite Fight, uh, where he has on guests like he had on Chris Sunshine Williams, who you heard later on Chael's yep. podcast with PVZ. That's right. Uh, but he's had him on a bunch Oregon of- Oregon guys. Yeah, he's a, he's a guy out of Oregon who- uh, 
who's who basically has a bunch of fighters on or or like fans to talk about what their favorite fight is. Exactly. Yeah. I like that kind of stuff. It's very cool, especially hearing like Chris Sunshine Williams coming on talking about his favorite fight of all yeah. time with him. Like, just very cool show. Uh, BBC MMA show has been pretty good. That's right. Even though like every episode is about forty five minutes long, it, it's a it's, little it's short re- and it's, it's a little, little it's really condensed. It's and tight. compact though. I yeah. like it. It's like know? morning radio ish a, a little fuck. bit. They'll it's like, be like all right, moving on to the next topic here on BBC MMA. Well, you know, that's the thing. Oh, yeah. It feels BBC as fuck. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, it feels yeah. very doctored. I like it. And though. like tight. Yeah, I like it though. Uh, and then uh, the exact opposite of that, the half cast podcast. Which is just Tyson, Pedro, and uh, Tyson oh, and Vasa right. sitting in a garage talking shit with whoever their friend is and, and that's in studio. Yeah, I saw something on our, on our MMA on Reddit saying Tyson Vasa was talking about just call me titties. I'll fuck you up with my titties or something yeah, like that. He's hilarious. Tyson Vasa is a funny, funny dude. Uh, speaking of other shit show podcasts that came out this year, the Luke Thomas Watch Party where he drank four loco. I hope that becomes a thing yeah, because that's wow. fantastic. Uh, and then our other uh, best new show for, of 2017 that's an honorable mention is the uh, No Shame podcast of Patty Houlihan. Very good. Like, just uh, Patty Houlihan is killing it on that podcast. That episode he did with, uh, with what's his face? The coach is fucking fantastic. With Kavanaugh? No, other coach. Uh, Owen Roddy. Owen I Roddy, yeah. Uh, coach, yeah. yeah, it was great. He's like a chill guy. Yeah, it was, it was a f- super fun episode. We talked about it, I think, a week or two ago. So, highly recommend checking that out. And on that note, uh, we are going to go ahead and segue, unfortunately, into a sadder uh, segment that we have, which is our In Memoriam section. So, this is us shouting out a bunch of podcasts that ended in 2017. Unfortunately, uh, some of them will go on to future endeavors, which... We'll talk about after this uh, break where we play some clips of all the In Memoriam podcasts. Um, Some of them have caveats. Uh, Shouts out to Bushido Talk, which we'll mention afterwards. But go ahead and check out our In Memoriam section. Y'all will be missed. R.I.P. In Memoriam. MMA podcast that ended in 2017. You will be missed. American Animals. Turd Dog Radio Network is that one of the one of the original radio show podcasts for MMA? Number three. What were the first two? Uh, no Holds Barred with Eddie Goldman, which was on IATA, and then Sound Off with Ryan Bennett. Sound Off was first. Ryan Bennett from MMA Weekly. Yeah, he was an awesome guy. He was. R.I.P. I would say actually, Turd Dog's fourth because, uh, well, maybe not fourth. I don't know. I I was the third ever MMA podcast. When I worked for a website called InsideFighting.com. Inside Fighting. I think I remember. I do remember that. Yeah. Uh, my first fight was in 2003. So I might have met him right around then, 2002, 2003. Yeah, it had to be around 2002 years. because uh, he was. Did he manage you in particular? No, but he helped. But he, he was doing Debbie. He helped out Justin Levin and Emerson. And Debbie. Yes, I know he helped some people out. Yeah, the old who was days. That's right. When it was, we were, we had a stable. You were a bunch of badass. Yeah. Yeah. We thought so. I saw Rob Emerson fight Jens Pulver on a volleyball court in Fridley, Minnesota. And that was his first fight. <laughs> yeah, with with the UFC's lightweight champion of the world. <laughs> it's pretty impressive when your first pro MMA fight is against the current UFC champion. Rutan and Ronaldo. I love Rory McDonald, my friend. And I reminded him, remember we called his first professional fight, Kenny Tran in Prince George, British Columbia. And he goes, oh, you remember that? I said, kid, man, it's it's amazing. And the, the paper just, mill town just smelled ah, disgusting there. Remember it that? It was unbelievable. Butterbean hey, was there. Of my home province no, no, of but the George, smell was yeah, there. You know, it's it's an to, industrial you know, town. You have to get lot used of, to it. A uh, lot of Canadian tuxedos up there. Yeah. The Mac Jack. No, the, and that nightclub. You remember oh, with the Lord. leprous skin on the floor? Ooh, and yeah. the, the, the uh, uh, carpets on the, on the ceilings? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was really weird. Bushido talk. course john hackleman how are you i am fantastic I, i'm trying to think if something's wrong um did something go wrong or something um no no i can't think of anything that went wrong so it's great i guess when you're my age if nothing's gone wrong everything else is great <laughs> there you go there you go um 
That's good to hear. Oh, you know what I've done? You know what I've done? I've officially, you know how I know I'm old? I've officially moved. I don't know if it's a lateral movement or a, or a up or down movement, um, but I've officially moved from warrior. I always thought I was a warrior. You know what I mean? A fighter. Mm -hmm. And I was, ever since I was like, I was, ever since I was like 14, I'm 57 now. But I've officially moved from warrior. I, th I think it's an upgrade. I've upgraded to keyboard warrior. Mm, nice. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it doesn't hurt anymore. It's like <laughs> you can get you can get your punches and kicks and shit in and get your digs in, but it doesn't hurt. I love it. Why didn't I figure this? I wish they had this when I was younger. I could have just been a keyboard warrior instead of a warrior. What it makes your life a lot easier. That's so, a good point. I'm happy. That's a, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh... Wow. Light Up MMA and the Sean Funky and the Baddest Man podcast. You're like at a circus, okay? And uh, and you never know what's going to happen. So when you mention things that are funny to you, it might not be funny to other people. So uh, <laughs> it was just, it was a piece of work. You know, one fight was like one of the best fights you've ever seen. And then you saw like a circus, like, you know, Gabby Garcia versus like a 50-year-old pro wrestler. You know, <laughs> I, I mean, uh, out of control, you know. And then I, I mentioned a few things on Bruto, you know, the heavy, the uh, sumo wrestler. I mean, the guy's like 700 pounds. He lost like 200 pounds the way in, okay? And I said that I said that he fell down the stairs at the hotel and caused an earthquake, okay? Because we, we had an earthquake that night, you know? And I guess I offended all of the Japanese sumo wrestling fat people public. And then um, there's... And then I... Then I said something, I guess, derogatory towards Miracle Krokov, which I didn't mean. Every so you okay? Uh, oh, Sean, Joe, you know, go ahead, go ahead and say it. Ben and I were laughing about this. Oh I showed my god! Wife. And I didn't say this, okay? It's like, really uh, funny. It's not that funny. So there's there's funny. uh there's dancing girls every single walk. Okay, it's like a ten minute show just to get down the stage. It's hilarious. So I was talking about it, and then um, the Wild Boys song came on, and he start they start lifting him from underneath the stage up, and I see some a head of a girl. I was like, oh, Miracle's coming out with his girlfriend, and then it gets to the top, it's like a nine year old girl. I go, oh, she's a, I go, I go, oh, she's a little young to be his girlfriend, you know. And I start I'm talking and then I guess I said that I he was a uh, uh, a pedophile and you know, so pretty much at, that night I was just eating it you know so it was like oh, Easter Black he wanted to kill me you know and then they said like I called him a pedophile and and I talked about fat people and I was like oh my god J Joe for what for whatever it's worth my wife Kelly who's from England is the world's least politically correct person Ben I know we were all out uh, your wife, Amy, and our kids about a month ago. I don't know if you picked up on my wife, but she has no concept of political correctness. Joe, she, she thought you were great. She didn't even understand why any of those comments would be offensive. Oh, I know, and I just ate it so hard from everybody, you know, and I'm like, I'm <laughs> so sorry, you know, I'm like, um, and I go, you guys know who the fuck you hired, right? <laughs> okay. So the second night, you know, I wrote these little, little notes and put them up there. I said, you're not funny. No joke. <laughs> <laughs> down. Okay, I just put like four little stickers up and they were cracking up laughing. I was like, no jokes, you're not funny. You know, I my wife told me this too. She's like, don't, you're not funny. She's like, don't, <laughs> like, don't say anything about women because you're so derogatory. I'm like, no. And then the first thing I do, I just stick my foot, foot right in my mouth. I'm like, oh, I was like, that's not his girlfriend. <laughs> the beauty of our podcast, you can say whatever you want. There's no FCC, and if people don't like it, unsubscribe. Knuckle up. We're not here for MMA alone. MMA is a, is a cognate for us, the hardcores. Those other people, they have already left, just us now. It is a measure by which we you know, cast auguries about how our lives work in the real life. Honor, loyalty, dedication, luck, subterfuge, back channel, enemies, friends, associates. 
perceptions, lack of awareness about the future, all of those. So, you know and I know this is number 252. Show number 251, I said if I hadn't been nominated, I was going to set myself fucking aflame. I don't think anybody, anybody has any doubts about my willingness to burn myself to death for ill-defined reasons. <laughs> but I got kids. And I got a new wife. And I got some heavy people who depend on me. So I go, okay, I'm not going to burn myself to death, but I'm going to burn myself to make a point. And I go, you know, I'm really way too handsome to entertain that. But I'm crazy, so I got to make a point. I said, okay, 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 look, look. This is the deal. If you stuck here this long, you enjoy the show. Only about 67% of this show is about MMA. I could have spent the whole show like Dr. Gene Scott talking about the theological connection between Spider-Man and Jesus Christ. Because it frames our existence. In the same way that this show feels weird because it hasn't happened for three weeks, it frames our existence in a way you feel weird, I feel weird. I feel better when I do this show. And the Sherdog sure Radio Network. R.I.P. When I started this bit, it was never to be looked upon as a journalist. I worked in FM radio. I love radio. I love MMA. Eight years ago, you wouldn't find a lot when you put in MMA radio into Google. Today, I looked before we came on the air. The search for MMA radio on Google returns 166,000 results. Wow. I started a show at InsideFighting.com called MMA Evolution in May of 2004. I was fortunate enough to have my first interview be with Quentin Jackson leading up to his fight with Ricardo Arona. Sitting in a small production room at 93X in Minneapolis with my co-host Caleb Quinn and Mike Riley, I couldn't believe that we were actually getting a chance to talk to the Quentin Rampage Jackson. After we did that interview, we worked for free for InsideFighting.com for the next 18 months. Slowly, I lost my co-host and ultimately my desire to do the evolution. At this time, the word podcast was not something people really said or even understood. Heck, blog wasn't a word then. Downtrodden, I contact Jeff Sherwood uh, about doing a show for SureDog.com. Uh, Jeff consulted with his partner, Garrett Poe, and before too long, we decided to move forward. I remember talking about a name for the show with Jeff, and he said, whatever it was going to be, it had to be on the SureDog radio network. I was confused when he said those words. Radio network. That, that would indicate it being an entity that had multiple offerings. He said, yeah, we want this to be like a radio station, a whole radio station dedicated to mixed martial arts. That's not going to work, I thought. There's no way near enough MMA content. you got to realize the UFC was doing one show every three months then. Every once in a while, Pride would have a you know, show within you know, a couple weeks of the Ultimate Fighting Championship. To fill that much content of multiple shows multiple times a week, Thought he was crazy. Little did I know that we were on the precipice of the MMA boom and something really great was about to start. All right, we are back. That was in our in memoriam segment. RIP to man, a bunch of great podcasts. We were just talking about how fucking good Sean fucking the baddest man at slash lineup MMA used to be. Slash, uh, let's get it on. A big John McCarthy before that. Who was also on lineup. Man, I. Yeah, I wish that I wish that show was still around, and I hope that uh, they come back in the future. Excuse me, future. Uh, and there was a couple others too. Uh, I mean, American Animals was dope. Uh, Rootin' and Ronaldo, which I'm hoping comes back because I love the engineer Vicky, who has uh, been working on uh, Sam Tripoli's podcast, The Naughty Show, like forever, way back in the day. So hopefully that comes back around, but. R.I.P. to all those shows. And now we are going to get into our top 10 shows of 2017, which I'm pretty hyped about. Uh, and we've come up with a combined list. I want to officially give a shout out to the Film Vault for the Vaulties, as well as to the Giant Bomb podcast, because they always do their Game of the Year podcast, and that's kind of the inspiration for this show. 
Uh, I just kind of that and, and I mentioned once that Anakin Florian I think did one year a uh, like an award thing for like fights and stuff like that. I think you're right. And like I just I don't know. I'm sure there's MMA podcast awards that exist. As a matter of fact, I know there's some at least. Um, but as an outlet who covers MMA podcasts, I feel like we should have our own award show for Hell shit yeah. that we enjoy. Uh, I feel like it's helpful. So hopefully you guys catch some new sh- stuff from it, and uh, that's that's all we're trying to do is uh, spread the word on dope MMA podcasts because that's what I do at work all day. I don't know about y'all, but I just listen to MMA podcasts, and I'm like, holy shit, more people should know about this. This is great. Uh, so on that note, uh, shout out to the Film Vault podcast and the Giant Bomb podcast for the inspiration, and we will move on. So the way that we did our top ten – Chris and I both came up with like a top 12 or so, and we whittled it down into a top 10 that we agreed on the order of for our official Sound of the Sound of Violence MMA podcast top 10 that we're going to put out. Uh, however, we do have a by the numbers amount too, and uh, I will tell you ahead of time how we broke down the by the numbers. Uh, so originally, I was going to give a point tip for every mention for by the numbers. Uh, however, that swayed it way too hard in the fact that, like, if we mention a podcast, it was basically going to win in a segment, which I feel like isn't fair. Like, I feel like if a show is getting a bunch of catches and can't misses, but not getting a lot, like, not getting the most mentions, that should weigh more than just getting mentioned every week, right? Yeah, I hear you. So, the way I weighted this is, for our By the Numbers episodes, you get .5 points, so half a point for a mention, you get two points for a catch, you get negative one point for a skip, and you get three points for a camp miss. So that's the weighting I use for our top ten shows. And with that, we created our top ten by the numbers. And then we, Chris and I, on our own, created our top ten choices for MMA podcasts of 2017. So we will go ahead and start off. Uh, Chris, what do you think? Should I mention the one we did by the numbers first on these? I feel like, yeah, probably. Yeah, by the numbers be good. So number 10, uh, by the numbers. Actually, wait. First off, let me segue into our announcer. Announcer guy, what do we got? Number 10. All right, so number 10 by the numbers is the Jordan Breen Show. Uh, I'm not surprised by this, actually, because the Jordan Green Show, as little as it gets mentioned on, like, a specific level, it's always very good, especially, uh, in 2017, it had, with Anthony Walker working the boards a lot of it, I feel like Jordan and Anthony were really funny together, there was, like, long, extensive hip-hop discussions on the Sherdog Radio Network, and, like, long discussions of, like, weird, politic-y kind of stuff, which I thought was very cool, Uh, so, I don't know, I thought it was interesting, and, uh, I'm guessing that's a big portion of why that was the number 10 by the numbers pick, but our official number 10 pick for MMA podcast in 2017 is Collapsed MMA, uh, and I, I was 100% the, uh, reason for this, you'll back me up on that. Yeah. Uh, it was between this and what other show, do you remember? Oh, uh, uh, fuck. It's between this and... I don't know, actually. Uh, oh, UFC Unfiltered. That's right. It was really close, but I, I went with Collapse MMA and Chris Agrino with me on it. Mostly because uh, Collapse MMA is doing something unique as shit. And UFC Unfiltered is can, can go either way on you. It's either really good or really bad. Yeah, it, it's... Like, if the, if the guest is good or if both dudes are in studio, like if Matt and Jim are both in studio, it can help a lot. If there's a good guest, it can help a lot. But Class MMA is always fucking fantastic. Uh, and they have done, I would argue, some of the very best podcasts that you'll ever hear in 2017. Especially, like, the K1 Dynamite card, the, the Tough One card, the UFC 39 card, and the uh, WEC Halloween Fury 4 card. Uh, at least our nominees, not to mention they're currently working on UFC 13, which has been fantastic so far. So I wanted to give them a shout out. Uh, while I w- would have liked to rank them higher, they, they started out late in the year, 
haven't had a lot of episodes out, and it is behind a paywall. So, uh, for those reasons, I will put it at number 10. But I highly recommend everybody subscribes to that podcast on Patreon, because it is uh, well worth it. Number 9. All right, so our number nine by the numbers is Sean Funky uh, and the Baddest Man slash Lineup MMA, which, man, this, it it makes you feel like if this podcast would have existed the entire year, it maybe would have just taken it overall. Like, the fact that it was only around for the first four months or so of the year and it still places this highly by the numbers is pretty crazy, right? I think so. Uh, but yeah, fantastic podcast. It no longer exists in the description. I'm going to link all of the places that still, that it's, it's still actually available. Uh, cause I don't know how long that's going to exist either. I don't know. Maybe I'll try to make an archive or something just in case. Cause I feel like it's all going to die soon, but we'll see. Uh, but man, very, very good podcast. And I hope they do something new soon, but our, uh, actual number nine, of our top 10 shows of 2017. Chris, what did we give? We got the vivisection. MMA vivisection. I thought we had the Fortnite. Oh, no, excuse me. I looked at the wrong thing. Uh, we have the Fortnite. <laughs> I totally fucked it up. My that. phone is actually about to die, so uh, I won't be able to say the rest of the eight things. That's cool. I got my, I got it all right here. So, yes, we are yeah, going MMA with Fortnite. The Fortnite. Is number nine. Which we should clarify once again is technically called the MMA Hour. The if MMA y'all, Four Hours. If y'all, yeah, the MMA 1400 Hour Podcast. If you like we like we've said many times, if you don't listen to the Cobain of M podcast, I'm surprised you're listening to this. And if you don't listen to the MMA hour, I don't believe that you listen to this. Uh, but we we will one hundred percent forever refer to it as the MMA Fortnite. And the MMA Fortnite was clearly the number nine uh best podcast this year. It could have been eight, it could have been ten, it could have been not on the list. It could have been number five. I don't know. Like, it's it's entirely depending on who is the guest and how, like, fucking weird Ariel is getting. I will go ahead and pull point from that podcast every time he, he mentions inhaling baby shit. That is a new role for me because I feel like that's come up way too many times where he's like, I can bathe in baby shit. Wait, what? He said that. So Wait, he many. said what? Chris. He inhaled the baby shit? No, he, he would bathe in it. Wait, when the fuck was that? I'm so confused. Chris, this has happened so many times. And I'm, I'm glad you're having that reaction, because that's the right reaction. No, no, no. When he say, when has he said that, I will bathe in baby shit? Well, no. There's no he con- says, he, cause he oh, cuss. no, I'm uh, changing diapers. I don't mind it. I love it. I would I'd bathe in it. Oh, well, okay, then that makes sense. But does it, though? Is that any different than what I just said originally? I mean, you knowing Ariel, he won't, he wouldn't say it verbatim like you did. Right. Yeah, that's why but I was confused. But it's the same sentiment. I'm sorry, that's why I was confused, because Ariel See, wouldn't literally be like, I'm going to bathe in baby shit, guys. Well, Here's my next guest. Yeah, no, he's not Steve-O. Like, what the Steve-O. fuck is going on? I agree, on? but yeah. he's Steve-O in the, when it comes to family shit, evidently. Yeah. I don't know. Man, yeah. Uh, the, just that discrepancy that we just had, I feel like it's a great example of why that podcast is only number nine. That in like, there's I don't, I don't care about a lot yeah, of the guests. Yeah, as George Carlin would say, it's the context that makes that show good or bad. Yeah, oh, it's the guests too, one hundred percent with that show. Like that is a like traditional. It's a guest oriented show. I it's would say powered it's, by the guests. I would say it's very similar to like a like uh, one of the what do they call those late night shows. Yeah. It's the same. Like Jimmy the Fallon, fucking Seth Meyers, whatever, like, Stephen Colbert, yeah, yeah, whatever you, you fucking call it. You them. don't give a fuck about it unless you care about whatever guest oh, is Oh, yeah, on, yeah. Like Jimmy thing. Kimmel will have a great guest. Not that I like, day, like I, I love Jimmy Kimmel. I couldn't, I don't, I hate late night. But like, if you're going to say like, oh, Joey Diaz is on late night, I'm like, all right, I'll watch that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Like, it, that's how I feel about Ariel's show is like, Ariel's show is great when he has good guests. Or when he does something interesting, but the, I feel like those are kind of few, too few and far between. It's a dime a dozen. To be ranked any higher yeah. on the list, unfortunately. Number eight. 
So by the numbers, we have the Joe Rogan experience at number eight. And we chose the Joe Rogan experience at number eight. Number eight, there you go. Pretty pretty amazing. That was not intentional at all. Yeah. That was entirely independent of the uh, rankings that we did by the numbers. We gave we picked all our rankings on a totally separate page and did not look at the number rankings. Uh, so that's I mean, yeah. It makes sense, right? I think a lot of this had to do with... The, the fact that he hasn't split the MMA podcast and the regular podcast. Not yet. quite yet, yeah. And the, when he had Dominic Cruz on earlier this year, he had Cody Garbrandt and Uriah Faber on, which is yep. a great episode. Uh, he had TJ on yeah, at yeah, one TJ point. Yeah, TJ with Ludwig. He had, uh, I mean, he had a bunch of people over the over the, over the the months. Uh, not to count like, all the fight companions that he did. Yep. Not to count all of the recap episodes he did with Brennan Schaub. Yep. Not to count all the Connor bullshit episodes with the Floyd shit. Yeah. Like, it's it was... Rogan's podcast, again, would be ranked higher. Like, I feel like his Rogan, the JRE MMA podcast, could be ranked way higher. Like, if that podcast existed all year, and that he only did those episodes... For all the MMA guests, I feel like that podcast would probably be top, be top five. Top five, for sure, yeah. But like, just so far, like the the way he split the the regular JREs are kind of rough, just because like, even when you have an MMA guest on, it's 50-50 whether it's even gonna be yep. about MMA. Like, even you, you have Joey Kedzie on, you talk about politics for eight hours, which is like I I know is gonna happen, and yep. I didn't, I didn't dislike it. But it doesn't make it a good MMA podcast episode, for example, you know? So, uh, while it is a, a, a great podcast and I highly recommend it, y'all are, are already listening to it again if you're listening to this. I feel like that is the one thing where I try not to cover those shows too much because I feel like if you're listening to this show, you, you're well aware of those shows and you're probably listening to it more often than this. Number seven. All right, so number seven, by the numbers, we had Submission Radio. Yeah. We'll talk about Submission Radio a bit and a little bit more, because actually, uh, full disclosure, it, it comes up again on this list. But uh, by the numbers, I can see how, like, because they're so consistent and the episodes are so long, a lot of times it's hard to, like, you're not going to mention it every week kind of thing, you know? Yeah, I mean, to be fair, in the beginning of the year, whenever I mentioned Submission Radio, it was based on the clips that they put on their YouTube channel, and it wasn't the full actual episode well, to listen to. Well, and even the full episodes, like, a lot of it's good, but, like, there's so much content that they put out yeah. that, like, but to get to all of it and to also have it rank in, a t- in like, a catch or a can't miss... Kind of makes it tough. So that I mean, makes sense by the numbers that it would be yeah. a little bit further down the list, but still making it on the list because of how consistent some of those clips and segments were. Uh, Shouts so, out to Don Fry. Yeah, which will, again, that show will come up uh, again later. But uh, our pick for number seven, top 10 shows of 2017. Number seven, we had Anakin Florian podcast, which uh, I have already cursed this podcast. Uh, we'll get into that in a minute, but it started out really strong in 2017, I feel like. They were under TJ Santis, and they've been putting out fire for a while now. Like, super consistent, Ray Longo calling in, giving good opinions. Yeah, the Ray Longo minutes always good. Always doing fight picks. Yeah, they get Luca Fury, they get the guys, who, people who love listening to that bet. They kind of get some insight. Um, yeah, they go through and give picks, like, uh, and then they'll cover, like, the, the topics that happen each week. Yep. Overall, just pretty pretty fun show, and uh, generally a bunch of fun, but the only thing that uh, kind of weighed down for me a little bit is them, f- like, leaving TJ DeSantis and going to Fox. That's right. And then, since they've been to Fox in the last couple of weeks, they've kind of fallen off for me, like, a bit. Um... Just, like, I don't know, man. It, the show feels different in the last, like, six weeks or so. Uh, just between TJ not no longer being involved, them throwing to a producer that kind of doesn't care, all of their intro and outro and music bits and everything are all slightly adjusted to fix for, like, oh, less likely to get sued by some musician or whatever. Uh, it's, it's just kind of a little bit 
worried me about the direction of that show. It's starting to feel a little bit like uh, how the fighter and the kid felt before they got nuked, or how uh, uh, Josh Barnett conquers the world felt before it got nuked, or like just the way Fox neuters and stuff yeah. is like kind of concerning a little bit. But uh, that's just me. Uh, but if they if they were still with if they were still with TJ and still in the same format they were on, I would probably put them in the top maybe five. Uh, but yeah, I bumped him. We bumped him down to seven just because of at least the recent performances made it hard for me to put him in top five. Number six. All right, number six. By the numbers, we had UFC Unfiltered. Surprised it made it a hot, this high up on the list. It must just be by mentions. Yeah, and I knew... Because I believe it had nine skips. Okay, like, Some the amount of skips number. that Unfiltered had, they did have a lot of really good fucking guests. They did have a lot of good episodes. And I think there was a couple of can't misses on Oh, there. David was, Greer, I thought, yeah. was one of them, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, shouts out to them for being able to get the guests that they have, especially it's, in studio. It's a weird show. Like, it's a hit or I know, like, when show, Alice Strober sure. was on there, like, about six weeks ago, whatever it was, or five weeks ago, uh, he had said to Jim Norton, he was like, uh, he was talking about, like, uh, Alice Strober, I have three daughters. He's like, and it, ta- and it takes someone who's a heavyweight fighter or, you know, a macho man to have daughters to watch over. And he and then uh, Matt mentioned something. He's like, you know what, Jim? He's like, I think you'd have sons. And he's like, what the fuck do you say that, eh, Alistair? He's like, because you're not man enough to have daughters. And then like Matt started to start laughing all the time. Checks and out. Like, it just ends. And that was on Embedded. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that absolutely adds up. Uh, yeah, UFC unfiltered. This is the only time we'll mention it on this uh, top ten, which is kind of crazy. It was a floater. Like, we almost had it instead of Class MMA, which we mentioned. Uh, it was right there, but uh, I leaned to Class MMA just because, man, UFC Unfiltered can kind of be hit or miss depending on the guests because they get so... Like, yo, I get that you all think Wyclef John is interesting or whatever, but, like, what the fuck is he or doing on an My animation? friend, uh, Jimmy's not in the studio today, so I got Phoenix Cannavale on here, and uh, yeah. I'm going to talk about my she's favorite... She's actually not even the worst, She's though. not in that bad. But I'm going to talk about my favorite Marvel movie when Jimmy's gone. Yeah, well, like, my favorite is when they have Jimmy English on with uh, he's, he's good. fucking Matt yeah, Sarah. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, no, he's great. Good, yeah. Like, I love the, those are almost better episodes than with Jim's on. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It's very close. But, uh, I don't know. I like that show, but it's very hit or miss, depending on the guests, for sure. Yeah. Uh, and then our actual number six show of the year is uh, the MMA Vivisection from Connor Bush oh, and Zane Simon. Absolutely hard not to pick it, right? Yeah. Like, just, it, it is the go-to breakdown of an MMA podcast. If you if you want to rely upon one podcast to give you solid tape studied insight on a fight card every week, they are the only option, right? Yep. Like there's no other option that's anywhere close to that. Yeah. Like, no. Laura Senka, Laura Senko and uh, Megan Anderson are like the only people even kind of close, and they're nowhere yeah. in the same row. It's kind of crazy. Like, Jack Slack will give you a little bit, but, like, every week they go fight by fight in hard detail where they do a shitload of tape study ahead of time. It's just incredible, and it's unlike any other podcast that exists. Generally, anything with Conor Rebush, considering the fact that Heavy Hands with Pat Wyman. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, well, and that's what makes Heavy Hands good, too, is because they both do a shitload of tape study for that, too. Like they're they're very hard and heavy on the analysis side of things, which I feel like is very underrated in the quality of analysis they put out. I mean, again, these were the people who called that Conor McGregor and Floyd Mayweather was going to. They were the only people in MMA I heard say, "Oh, Floyd's just gonna walk forward and throw a bunch of fucking," or or, or Floyd's just gonna walk forward and let Conor throw until he figures out everything Conor has in the first couple rounds and then yep. just pieces them apart like they said that clearly on that Maymac depress- Vivid Depressed Us episode yep uh, so I, I just feel like I, they, they deserve far more credit than they get and I'm a very big fan 
number five. So by the numbers, we had Sherdog Radio by TJ DeSantis. I had combined this, uh, these podcasts because there's like Sherdog Radio is too vast. Yeah. Like so, I did. I didn't include like Jordan Brain Show, for example, or uh, or Press Row, but I did include like all in pretty much any of the Sherdog podcasts that TJ was a host on. So like whatever random beat down, Mike Friendly, whatever episode preview review yep. whatever TJ was on uh, <clears throat> and that explains by, why by the numbers it was up there but also I mean they were just very consistent in 2017 less so towards the end of it uh, they probably would have been higher up the list if they have kept going however with all the fucked up changes thanks to Crave at uh, SureDog uh, y'all can now look for uh, the Between Rounds Patreon to be taking the place of 90% of that content. So, highly recommend subscribing to Between Rounds, which we'll have multiple links for in the description. But, we'll keep on moving on. But, Sure Dog Radio by TJ does deserve a mention there. And our actual number five pod, MMA podcast that people should check out this year. Uh, talk and Talk with Chris. Yep. Fucking great, right? It's been great all around. Dude, the you were the one that introduced me to yep. talking talk. Yeah, actually. it was pretty spontaneous. I remember I was, uh, I think I had seen someone mention it on Reddit. I think it was the uh, the, it, the episode with the fucking terrible tuna drink. Yep, it, it was that or the wine. It might have been, It was. I think it was the OG and tuna was the first one. And after that, he had Marquette King, the puncher for the Oakland Raiders, um, on there. And they fucking disguised different things of wine either way like once I heard it, it was Daniel Cormier and he had a good team with him I was like holy shit this is great yeah. I have to mention this to Chris and then, no it's fantastic it, 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 yeah it, it's great it quickly and, uh, yeah. became one of my favorite podcasts like that is an easy contender of 2018 podcast of the year like top 10 easy as long as they can just keep doing that show, it's just going to get more and more ridiculous. You can tell. Like, Especially, like, the limited amount of guests they'll have on there. Like, they had Max Holloway this week, who was great to listen to. He's hilarious. Well, and they had Habib Hermagameda, Hermagameda of a couple weeks ago. He was hilarious. Yeah, and DC, like, like well, people, fighters love DC. Like, yeah. fighter, DC is a fighter's fighter. Like, like the only people who dislike Daniel Cormier are casual, and I wouldn't even call him casual if you just fucking fake MMA fans. Well, no, they're, they're like ultra casual fans. Like. Yeah, they're like, well, you're not the real champ yeah. because Jones is a. Re- it's like, dude, he did fucking steroids. Like, I'm sorry. Anderson Silva, I think he did roids his whole life too, based on his whole fucking consensus. Well, and fuck. even if. Even if. Even before John popped, like, shitting on DC is insane. Yeah, no. Like, DC is one of the greatest light heavyweights of all time. One of the greatest heavyweights of all time, too. That, too. like, a 10 win streak. What the fuck? That's the craziest thing. If Kane wasn't at AKA, dude, I bet you DC would be the heavyweight champ, probably. Uh, Arguably. Dog, I would watch him and Stipe all day. Are you kidding me? That would be a great fight. So much fun. Uh, But, yeah. If Kane, I know he's in the light training camp. Say Kane can't go, right? You know goddamn well DC's going back up. He I don't know give if he is. No, he he kind of mentioned that too on this week's episode. Did he? Yeah, he actually really thinking released, about it. He said he's like, I need to. My boy Kane's in there. He's like, and Pizzer are asking him like, all right, well, what's your plan after you fight Volkan? And he's saying, like, hey, hey, all he said is this weight cut's getting tough. That's all he said. That's all he said. And he's like, as I get older, so... Hell yes. But he did say two weeks before that, though, I would never want to fight Francis. Yeah. But he did say that. No. He said he said he would get murdered by him. Like, and, and like he didn't bad. say he wouldn't fight him. He just said, I'd probably get murdered by him, but it'd still be a fun fight. Like, I will, I would still pick dude, DC could, in that fight. Because even Nick Swimmer, you know, he's like, oh, he's like, I know you have the skills to take him down. The wrestling, yes. And he's like, but he's a big boy. Yeah. It's, that's the <laughs> fact. I'm sorry, though, like, dude. The fact that DC could pick up Gustafson, John Jones, who's like 6'3", too. and powerbomb him. Yeah. Dude, he can pick up 200... Dude, he can pick up 280 pounds. He's a big... He can pick up Ngannou. He can do it. For sure. But the question is, is can he survive the goddamn shot? He's going to take the chin trying to do yeah, it. Yeah, probably not. 
We'll find <laughs> out after this <laughs> next fight with Vulcan, really. We'll see. If if Volcom knock say Volcom knocks him out clean, then that well then that's it. Well, like, he's done. He'll retire. Then you just gotta do No, the- he'll retire. He'll retire. I'm sorry, like DC will retire, and then it'll just be Volcon versus Gus Davidson, and then we'll just see what happens. You know, like I no 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 DC won't retire. He might just go to heavyweight. <laughs> I don't know. It's weird. I'd be happy with DC doing either thing, really. Yeah. Like D- I'd love to just hear DC on commentary and on a yeah. podcast. Like, but I love him. I love his fighting style. I think it's fucking awesome. Anyway, that's our giant pick for fucking DC as king of the number five. Uh, position, we would put him higher if the, that podcast would have been a long, around longer. It's only I think been around like what fifteen episodes, sixteen episodes, eighteen now. And a uh, shout out to Nick, Nick Swimmer and his co-host uh, Dennis Rodriguez, the occasional guest, yep. and our friend Brian, who always go to Port of Ireland, oh, Mexico. Uh, shout out to Chef, Port of, uh, uh, Chef, and then Blurry, Chef Blurry, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. Tyler, who's like. Their Samoan friend, yeah. but uh, either way, uh, shouts out to their Avengers in Port of Vallarta, Mexico, every once in a while. Because last week is when they went back That's to right, Port of Vallarta and that. Mr. Banana and that whole thing, and it was chaos. <laughs> Pretty good. Number four. All right, our number four picked by the numbers is promotional malpractice live chat. We are not going to get into this because we're going to get into it very soon. But, a fucking, I could see why it would be number four by the numbers, right? Yeah, of course. Like, between, and that's not even counting the fucking recaps, the, the Monday Morning Analyst. Yeah, there's a Monday, the fucking, yeah. yeah. The, the high quality of the fucking, the, the, the goddamn uh, watch party alone and the results shows that Luke Thomas yep. has been doing. So, Luke Thomas is uh, clearly deserves to be on this list, but yep. we'll get to that in a bit. But our actual number four for our top uh, ten podcasts of 2017, number four goes to Submission Radio. Yep. Shout out Fantastic. to... Casper and Dennis. Shout out to our maids, Dennis and Casper, in That's Melbourne, right. Australia. Fucking Fantastic. Yeah, those guys always do a fantastic job of getting guests, high quality guests. Uh, Some of the best consistently get, I would argue, maybe better and more fun guests than Ariel. Yeah, no, like just this. No, week, I wouldn't say better. I would say more fun guests than Ariel. Just this week, who I listened to, they had Javier Mendez on there. Um, John Morgan. Yeah, they had John Morgan. On like there. that's what I mean by more fun. Is like I feel like for cards and for breakdowns and for guests, like. They get guys like John Morgan and uh, fucking Tommy Toehold and a bunch yeah, of dudes. Yeah, Tommy Toehold has a section on there. They get guys, you know, like T.J. Dillashaw. They had Don Fry in the a summer bunch of times, talking about yeah. May Mac tour and how Oscar De La Hoya is a homo and shit yeah. like that. And shit that you should never really be listening to like that. that exactly. Is, isn't politically correct. A bunch of Boss Rudin. And, yeah. And like, yeah. Boss Rudin talking about steroids. Yeah. And, it's yeah. just always fantastic. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of that show. And the fact that they'll fucking record live after show at a fucking brothel. That's insane. Like, who does that? They clearly don't give a fuck. For sure. Plus, there's been a de- I believe there's been some drinking on that show as well, if I yeah, remember right. Yeah. At least to talk about hanging out in pubs, which I'm always uh, is going to bump you up in credits on my goddamn scorecard. It's like, dude, if they're in a brothel, they're like, all right, night, well, after this show, you want to go fuck some hookahs. You know, like, what the fuck are they doing there? Like, it's so weird. Right. Like, it's great. Right. Like, what the fuck? No, as like <laughs> Connor Rebush would say, hello. Yeah, 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 that's right. <laughs> fucking terrible Australian accent. Mine's even <laughs> worse than it is. Because I can't imitate his terrible accent. But, yeah, Submission... It's a terrible Australian accent. Submission Radio is fantastic. It's it's always good. And it like, is fun, too, because like during just the press conferences that Dana put together, you'll see Casper Dennis. Yeah. Like, All right, uh, uh, Dennis something from Submission Radio. Yeah. Um, I just got one quick question for you, Lou Rocco. There's someone. Yeah. Here, you know. uh, Mark Hunt. Yeah, Mark Hunt. Yeah. You know, uh, Robert Whitaker. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Like, oh, I can't. You know, if they could say that. Right. It's, it's implied. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. 
Oh, there, uh, by the way, from this week's episode, Dennis and Casper said if you go to their YouTube channel, which is just clearly Submission Radio, they have an exclusive interview with Mark Hunt this week. So go check that shit out. Yeah, I'll put a link in the description for that for sure. Uh, actually, you know what? If you click, if you tap on the uh, on the Submission Radio number four link that we have in the uh, description, it'll be a link right to that uh, interview. Uh, and then we will go ahead and jump into, now that we've gone through number four. The we'll top keep, three we'll of keep, the year. We'll keep moving on. Number three. All right, our number three by the numbers. Man, these by the numbers once got real close to our actual ones. Uh, our number three by the numbers is co-main event, which uh, we will talk about shortly. No spoilers, but uh, yeah, we'll talk about that very shortly. So we'll just keep moving. Our actual number three is promotional malpractice was our pick, yep. which is basically I'm gonna go and count promotional malpractice slash the Monday morning analyst. Uh, it's kind of like a little joint kind of same they, thing, kind of per week little. I would say one's a post fight analysis and the yeah. other one's kind of a mid week. Kind of what's the scope of each division yeah. kind of thing. And That's why I really dug promotional malpractice more or less more over than the Monday morning analyst because I liked hearing what people had to fucking say midweek. See, I agree too, but I also love some of the breakdowns yeah. you've done on the Monday oh, morning course. analyst of like specific positions going frame by frame yep. on slides. Like he's done an incredible job, especially like the Brian Ortega one was great. The fucking, uh, oh, there was one recently that was really, really good. Um, Probably R.D. Lawler, really. No, but before that, like, uh, I forget who it was. <sighs> Excuse me. Anyway, Luke Thomas has just been absolutely fantastic on that. And uh, he's just, he's he's a monster. He puts out such good content. Like, the quality content he puts out, he's funny as shit. Uh, people will sleep on how funny that dude is. Shout out to all the donks. Yeah, shout out to all the donks. Is basically all I have to say. And shout out to motherfuckers putting yellow mustard on anything. Really, that's, that's not right. a corn dog. Jim Beam or go eat a bag of dicks. Yeah. That's all. Uh, that's so we're gonna go ahead and end this one. So we'll keep on moving on. Number two. That's right. As the uh, put the couch in the van guy said, number two, uh, by the numbers, it was the MMA Fortnite. Uh, I'm not surprised by the numbers. It was the MMA Fortnite. Er, yeah, Ariel always has, has a knack and ability to getting so many great guests. Whether it's you know, Romero and his infamous translator Ray, yeah, or. The, or even like the Nate Diaz interviews, the fucking Dominic Cruz, GSP, putting some knowledge on there. Colby Covington talk about how Brazil's a fucking dump. Yep. Not my words. Tiffany but, Time know. Bomb stealing Fedor. Yeah, and Ariel being butthurt about it. That's or right. even in the past, with Ariel crying over being banned yep. after leaking Brock Lesnar. Jorge Masvidal getting pissed at Ariel. Yep. Uh, who else? Man? There's, There's so lot. many good ones. Conor McGregor being on there occasionally. Tony. Yeah, Tony Ferguson being weird as shit as Kevin always. Lee. Kevin Lee. He actually yeah. likes Ariel. They have a good relationship. Uh, but yeah. Matt Matrion. Yeah, but I like Ariel's show. Yeah. Uh, I have Fedor. Was it Fedor I, on the show this year? With this translator multiple yeah. times. It's been fucking fantastic. He's like, do you have your sweatshirt now? And <laughs> That's right. That, That's and then Fedor's like, yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I have my sweatshirt. So funny. Yeah, um, yeah, I haven't listened to Fortnite in two weeks, but to be fair, I think, honestly, out of however many episodes we've done this year which I would guess what will be on episode 62 or 63 now I don't know right our next uh, we've done 61 episodes okay. the, uh, official so, episodes we've done like 100 uh, like non-official because a lot of those are commentaries and shit that's right so I would guess we've done like 20 this year I don't know how many well, uh, something like that like the 20, 30, 30. Something like 30. Well we've done 30. clearly we don't do one no no, no I can tell you here. I can tell you how many we've done we've done like Around forty, I want to say forty. Yeah, probably this year. Fuck it, you don't. Because uh, we, I think there was like thirty six. 
We MMA started in summer of last year, around June or May. Well, I think there was like 30 MMA hour references this year, or like 36 MMA hour references Either way, this year. he has so many good guests that it's always a quick mention regardless, yeah. which should be because of the fucking guests he has on there. Shouts out to the episode with Mike Perry, I think it's 386 like 378, where he's high as a fucking kite. Yeah, Aljamain Sterling, Alec went on the beach. <laughs> That's right, or in that building where he's like, look at my fucking view, Ariel. Yeah. You know, learn so how to good. sell houses, you fuck. <laughs> So good. Also, my new favorite thing, everyone make sure you're following Al Iaquinta, not his regular uh, Twitter handle, but his uh, Al Iaquinta Realtor Twitter handle. It's Um, way funnier. He's just telling everyone to get their fucking credit score up. It's the best. So, yo, your fucking credit score is garbage. (laughs) Fucking step that shit up before you come at me. (laughs) And, like, uh, I forget who it was. Somebody tweeted, uh, tweeted out, like, yo... I really need to send my credit score off. I'm going to get with Ally Quinta and get this shit proper. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, you're on the right track. Come see me. <laughs> it's the fucking best. Uh, but yeah, MMA Fortnite got the number two by the numbers. Uh, but our official number two is Come In Event Podcast. Yeah, good old Chad does and Ben Folks. Man, it's the MMA podcast of MMA podcasts. Like, uh, it. The only reason it's not number one is because the number one podcast is so motherfucking number one. But, like, this podcast could easily be number one. It could, man. Just with it's really a coin flip between with their the segments, top two. Yeah, I mean... It's arguably funnier. I think I think the only knock I have on it is it's... Not enough breakdowns and too much... It's, like, I love it. Like, every episode is definitely, you can listen it's to a little it. formulaic. It's the same thing, but in a way, it's always the same each week. Like, well, that's not what, that it's a bad thing. And I but feel like that's why we don't bring it up that much. Yeah. Like, as much as we do bring it up, we don't, like, it's it's rarely our, our camp. It's or definitely our reference each week, for sure. We'll yeah. reference it every week. But it's always good. It's Which is good, because they, what they do is good, and if it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of yeah. thing. But... Yeah, the only thing I'd say with them is they're very... Because I can't say repetitive because they're not, but the formula stays the same, which is fine. Yeah, they're on a schedule with the podcast. And I get that. I like it because, you know, they work for Bleacher Report. I mean, that's how we do it, too. They have their own journalism shit they do. Uh, I never go to Bleacher Report that much. When I do, I definitely see Ben Folk's material on there. I think he's the one Bleacher. Maybe it's Chad. And we met... uh, You were there with me when we met... A fellow Dengasu guy, right? Yeah, we met uh, the dude who he does the article with. Fuck, who it was his... I can't remember his name. It's, uh... He does the training shots of Danny Downs. We met Danny Downs at yeah. that bar at, uh... At, it was uh, at Belbo Tap House. Belbo Tap House, in yeah, San yeah. Diego. Great dude. For those wondering... Very, people. very For those nice who haven't dude. understood where the fuck we're at, we're in San Diego, so... I uh, think we've mentioned Clearly. It. Like, it says everywhere. Yeah. And like we've mentioned all the time. Uh, but yeah... And, like, by all the beers we drink, you should be able to figure that out for <laughs> yeah. sure. That's point. Where's that? Oh, that's right. Stop, stop to John Margaret. Uh, anyway. Yeah. Fucking great. Comedy event's fucking great. And shouts out to Adult League Hockey, which I will probably be doing in ten years. Yeah. No, I love it. I love, I, I love hearing about... Fucking Ben having to figure out what a pirate dress means live on oh, air. Oh, for his daughter, yeah. yeah. He's that like, was clearly great. not an adult pirate dress. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. Like, just so every, I think his kid's like 10 or 11. Yeah, so like, yeah no, exactly. Yeah. No, but that's everything that's great about that show is it's so that podcast at this point, like, it's so deep in its own, like, fucking signature cutout of MMA and that, don't those guys I swear do they like live like right next to like in Washington or something like, no, no in uh, Oregon. D- uh, North Dakota or South Dakota <laughs> or live up there? Montana I believe Montana. fuck me I thought they lived like in Oregon or no something. I think it's Montana oh Jesus that I think makes it's sense. Montana Okay, well, all I remember is that they literally live right next door. Like, they're in the same fucking city. No, they're they're down the street from each other. Like, Like, they're literally in the same neighborhood. Yeah. It's either, I want to say Montana, but it might be one of the Dakotas. I think think it's South Dakota. It might be South Dakota. It's one of those two, but it's very funny to me either way. Uh, But yeah, they're absolutely fantastic and hands down one of the best uh, MMA podcasts 2017. And our number one MMA podcast of 2017. Let's go ahead and hear that 
bit where I say the same thing I just said. The Sound of Violence's number one MMA podcast in 2017. Uh, it is, by the numbers, heavy hands, and in actuality, heavy hands. Yep. Fucking heavy hands killed it this year, dude. They sure did. They're Rebush, fucking fantastic. Pat Wyman. Um, I mean, they're they're my go-to as far as everything uh, really, technical right? breakdowns, uh, post-fight recaps, from hilarious the week jokes about sad shit. Yeah, uh, referencing other podcasts, these guys have it all. I mean, uh, and their episodes are usually about an hour and a half long, ninety minutes, which ain't too bad. Every but, goddamn week, they I mean, don't miss weeks. They always put out content. They, they, I don't know how many episodes Pat Wyman has trained at fucking King's MMA. That's Connor right. has trained a bunch over the years, but is also a fat kid and very funny, which really I feel like helps add to it. Pat also has a dope podcast about the Roman Empire, which I feel like is cool. Like, just everything about Heavy Hands is the best. It's yeah. really, like, it's hard to argue why it's not the best one of the year. Their recaps... Like, technical-wise, the amount of tape study they do leading into fights, the amount of tape study they do after fights, and the amount of breakdowns they do in, like, very succinct technical Their ways. Their Patreon content they put out. True. Their Jimmy Rivera interview talking about uh, sparring TJ Dillashaw. Fucking all kinds of cool content. Like, uh, all of their fucking boxing content they put out. The uh, historical perspective. F-I-S-T-O-R-I-C-A-L perspective. Uh, which they put out on their Patreon is all about boxing, which is fucking fantastic. And they do like controversial boxing. Uh, that was like kind of the thing that Jack Slant kind of did too, right? Yeah, well, but theirs was like all controversial boxing opinions. Like, uh, it, like uh, here's why Floyd Mayweather is the best, best boxer. Oh, that was them, right? Like, not Jack Slant. Yeah, 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 that was them, yeah. But uh, it's very fucking cool. Just everything they've done. Uh, they put out a cool episode of all about how all about middleweights at one point and like the weird fucking chaos that is the middleweight division. Just ah, it's just so good. Everything they put out is so good, uh, and I feel like it's a very underrated for how goddamn high I rank them on every list ever. Uh, but especially this year, I feel like they really killed it. Especially in the realism, they talk about Maymac. The realism, they talked about all the fights that happened. Yep. Covered a lot of boxing that, like, was, pr- like, now that you look back on, you're like, shit, they covered a lot of, like, actual prescient boxing stuff when it comes to MMA. Yeah, like, whether it's Anthony Joshua or Vasily Lomachenko. Yep. Or, uh, a lot of Lomachenko. They covered the Jeremy, uh, the, the Horn Pacquiao fight. That fight. Not Jeremy Horn, <laughs> the other Horn. No, that's no Jeremy Jeff Horn. Jeff Horn. Jeremy no, Horn is the. Uh, it sounds white <laughs> Jer- enough. No, yeah. Jeremy Horn's the MMA fighter. Yeah, yeah big it, difference. Former heavyweight. Chuck Woodell yeah. guy. Yeah. yeah, Jeff Horn, the fucking Australian. Uh, no bias in that judging. Excuse me, um, but yeah, no, they they're very knowledgeable in pretty much most combat sports as far as what I've heard them uh, discuss. Yeah, it's fantastic, and uh, by far uh, the podcast. That uh, I would give the number one quality seal of approval from the side of violence too, right? Yep, I agree. I mean, if it's not only by the numbers but our actual pick, that's a pretty good goddamn seal. Uh, so we will actually get into format for once. Uh, once again, uh, we'll go ahead and get into uh, what our announcer is going to shout out. What uh, what's up, creepy announcer that kidnapped us? What do you think we should listen to next? MMA podcast to catch in 2017. All right, so Lotion in the Basket guy says that uh, the next segment is the catch. Chris, what uh, catch did you have for people? What podcast should people catch in 2017? My catch overall for 2017 will be co main event. Ooh, I, I dig it. Like, yeah. You should I mean, catch that. it was it was consistent, you know, like we said, Ben Folks, Chad Dundas, for they sure. Had their spiel, they had their segments. Even are you fucking kidding me? Whether it was their homeboy from Master Tweet Theater, Sir Nigel, that they will never ever announce who that is, and I hope they don't. Um, it was always consistently, not informing to me. It was consistently funny. 
Yeah. Um, it was one of those that you can tune in any week of the year and you're like, wow, this is good. And so, that's a good catch because I feel like people who know MMA podcasts know about that podcast. People who know about MMA don't know about that podcast. Yeah. Like, unless you are aware of MMA podcasts and you've done a Google search and heard about that shit, I feel like just casual fans, like, if you ask anyone who's into MMA at a bar, I would say 80% of them have never heard of that show, which yep. is crazy to me. Uh, because it is one of the top five MMA shows easily. Easily, yep. Uh, number two, according to us. But very fucking good. And uh, yeah, that's a great pick. Uh, my my catch for 2017 is weird. And not actually relevant necessarily to MMA all that much. Although it is somewhat. I have Punch Drunk Sports as my catch. Uh, Punch Drunk Sports is a podcast hosted by Ari Shafir, Sam Tripoli, Sam Tripoli right? and Jason Tebow, and it is about all sports. However, they do do a lot of MMA coverage. Uh, Mickey Gall is called in a bunch of times. Yep. George St. Pierre, Nick, and Nate Diaz are all regulars. Totally the official versions of them and not the ones that are on Kitty Litter and calling in talking about... <laughs> I did all the kitty litter, and then I was trying to day Ronda Rousey, but the Diaz brothers buried me in the desert in a cardboard for a refrigerator box. That is not a, that is not the one I was talking about. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of shit going on in that podcast. It's great. Uh, Mickey Gall, actually, the actual Mickey Gall does call in. They've been hyping him for forever. They were one of the people who mentioned that he should be walking out to, hey, Mickey, way back in the day. Uh, and it's just fantastic. It's a fucking fantastic show. They say, full disclosure, they say horrible, horrible things that if you are at all sensitive... A snowflake. No, not even a I'm snowflake. Kidding. Like, if if y'all, if y'all you feel bad when listening to things, maybe don't listen to this show. If you're hypersensitive, don't they're gonna They're gonna shit on something you love in a very offensive way at some point, but... When Jason Tebow says "mama faggot," he means it in love because his mom, his mom did date chicks his entire life. Cool. He does have like three moms. Fuck yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so that's unique. Is it's what, what that is. Right. So, so when you when you when you hear when you hear the phrase "mama faggot," just know it comes in. It comes with. The, some kind of reference. It's fucked up. That old show's yeah, fucked up. Maybe Horrible very, things happen. It's a fucking terrible. Thing also, to they say. they have a thing called the uh, they they have a thing where you they you know, they have a bag of bets where they just put horrific bets in a bag and they pull them at random. Oh, I'm sure. Whenever anyone wants to do a bet, don't ever do a bag of bets. Uh, so far, some of the ones that have happened. Uh, Jason Tebow had to watch a gay porn with a one of those strap-on dildos on his head. Cool. Uh, another dude had to watch a porn with uh, after taking Viagra. Cool. Uh, a gay porn. Fuck uh, yeah. On stream. Uh, you streaming? Yeah, that? well, no, oh, like you God. had to stream your face while watching a gay porn. Oh, oh well, to have him taken Viagra. Uh, let's see, what are some of the other ones? There's really bad ones. A lot of like, I love having to wear an I love gay, uh, I love black cock shirt on stage. Because they're all so comedians. it either sounds really homophobic or really hilarious. So yeah. Your boys well, up. speaking of really homophobic and hilarious, their most recent one is they have a bet called the Reverse Kobayashi. Where they have to stick a hot dog up their ass. Uh, whoever has the worst NFL record of the season for their team, uh, all of the losers have to do it. Not just, not so, just. So you the, better hope that four. someone doesn't like the Browns. Well, no. So it, I believe it's the Falcons. It is the Cowboys. It is the Raiders. And well, it, the Raiders, but you're And it was the Panthers, it. but the, they let the Panthers guy get out of it because he was so fucking far ahead he was killing him. Well, he is. The Panthers yeah. are like 10 4. So clearly, so they let him at out this of point, it. despite the teams he told me, the Raiders are going to be the hot dog well, up the ass team. So. Well, no. All of them, only the one who wins doesn't get in a hot dog up the ass. Everyone well, else well, does. Oh. <laughs> well, so. They, oh. Okay, so the Panthers guy is going to win. No, the Panthers guy is already out. Oh. 
So the Falcons most likely is next. Maybe, but now it's like a real competition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember like, the other team you said. The, the Falcons guy is team who's been asking to shove a hot dog up his ass the entire time. Sounds like he, he wants to enjoy it. That's, so, that's, hey, all that's the, power, the bit. All yeah. the power to him. It's, my point being... The show is very, very fucked up, and if you're if you have a weak stomach or if you get easily offended by any kind of horrific easily language, easily triggered. Yeah, if you're easily triggered, not the show for you. But if you love the most horrific comedy store style humor, it's kind of the fucking greatest thing that's ever existed. So uh, that is my catch. It is not for most people, and uh, understandably. However, uh, I, I do love it dearly. And by, or by the numbers, catches obviously MMA Fortnite. I mean, we mentioned that show so many fucking times on catches because yep. of interviews, like, obviously. The MMA Podcast is skip in 2017. So what is your... What podcast? So we, I should clarify this. Eugene S. Robinson style, who uh, formerly was of Knuckle Up, is now of the... Uh, Eugene S. Show Stomper P- Patreon, which we'll have a link for in the, des- in the description. But what MMA podcast should people have skipped in 2017? Just clarifying this sh- does not mean people should always skip your podcast. This just means in 2017, you did not put out podcasts people should listen to. I'll just say this. Uh, this podcast has had fantastic phone interviews, uh, specifically last week, which was a great episode of this podcast. Interesting. Uh, but overall, it has to do a lot with the introductory shit that they put on that really kind of just turns me off the podcast. Uh, this is actually the courtesy of ESPN's Brett Okamoto's Five Rounds. It is Ooh, my skip of the year. Wow. Because so, yeah. you're a big fan of Five Rounds, too. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm a big fan. Well, be you were. But when they have good content, it's right. great. That's right. the thing. Uh, but overall, I evaluated it. It was between this, unfortunately, and Unfiltered. Unfiltered is fantastic. I love Jim Norton and There's some skippable ass episodes of Unfil- Unfiltered. Uh, I analyzed it a lot, and th- it honestly came down to the last five weeks. And the last five weeks of five rounds came down to a lot of Connor versus Pacquiao talk. And I was like, you know what? We already just got through suffering with the Connor versus Floyd. And he Floyd. covered so much Connor and Floyd shit. There's just the thing. Bruno Komodo. As a journalist myself, or aspiring journalist to say still, he's fantastic. I think he does a great job. I'll say that right now. True. But, what, but that's what I'm saying, but when it comes to his podcast, he does a lot of little things that we really shouldn't be listening to as far as like MMA-related stuff. It's like Disney he, SPN. He, he, it's not his fault. It's his co-host, Arda. Arda is the guy who instigates a lot of stuff. Like it's morning radio. I'll just tell you gimmick, this right now. Yeah. I'll, okay, Arda, since you'll never listen to this. Yeah. We don't give a fuck about the Ball family and people doing the Ball. It's Lonzo Ball, LeVar Ball. Yeah, he's a father. Do any he, of them get hit in the face for a living? Because that's what I'll start caring about, any of them. I'll tell you this. I don't watch NBA and I never have, but Lonzo Ball did just get posterized by Kevin Durant and the Warriors just yesterday, and it was fantastic. That's great. A buddy of mine who hates the Kevin Lakers Durant's now. 90, right? Something. I don't know. But he plays on the Warriors. And I was he's thinking Kevin Garnett. Of, yeah. <laughs> That's very different. Good reference, though. So. Either way, it's not Brett's fault. It's Arda. That's the thing. I swear, it's fucked yeah, up. Like, no, this is one I'm of those things you. where it's like a I'm co-host will ruin a podcast. I'm with you. And it's Arda. I'm sorry. Yeah. Brett is fine. He does a good job, but it's this fucking co-host who fuck shit up. And be like, hey, Brett, how's it going? Oh, yeah, GSP versus Busy was great. Oh, what did you think of Lonzo Ball banking that jump shot? And he'll be like, um, that was cool, but let's go ahead and talk about MMA, yeah, Arda. He turns your real and morning like, radio fuck, real quickly. Like, ESP has been terrible since well the past really 10 years yeah. they've just declined since they turned into Disney SPN I mean well or as my friend called it BSPN by a sports past noon you know cause the liberal oh talk. shit dog <laughs> you know, that's yeah. Sit down, I got every it's, it's, really oh. it's really BSPN. It's really, it's really, it's really BSPN. But yeah, no, I mean, it, when Brett, Brett does a fantastic job as interviews. He really does. He's a great interviewer. More like CSPN. 
It's like fucking cuckold sports <laughs> network. Yeah. Cuckold sports fast noon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But either way, Brett Okamoto, he's great as far as like his interviews. Great interview. Yeah. He does a great job as far as interview goes. His interview with Mike Art Perry is was amazing. Annoying as shit though. Yeah, Arda is annoying. Brett had a great interview with McGregor. Brett's fine. It's just Arda and like fuck. Like this and whole remember, year is Arda new, fucked it up. Too, like, yeah. He, he's only been the last half of the year, and I feel like we've covered a lot less of that show since he's joined. Oh, no, dude. Our, Br- five rounds to, the, like, I think two or three catch this for me, like, this year yeah. alone, like, at the beginning of the year. Like, it was great. And then Arda came along. He's like, kind of just driven into the ground, yeah. But, yeah, unfortunately, that's my uh, skip. <laughs> uh, well, my skip for the year is due to his own goddamn... I have an idea. Due to his own is. goddamn decisions... Mr. Brendan Shaw yep. in the Bring Brown Breakdown. Yep. Brandon. He talked about fucking May Mac so goddamn much that you, you get know, a skip. I mean, you know, you get a Chris. skip. I mean, Connor really does have a shot in this fight. All right, ro- take it easy, Robin Black. I'm just saying. Connor McGregor. Go ahead and McGregor. say the word angles 14 more times. But I'm just saying, I, I can't. I really, if you, so here's what I, I want to clarify this super specifically. Brendan Shop's podcast, The Big Brown Breakdown, is fucking awesome when there's a good guest. It's great. Like, uh, Cowboy the fucking talking about Jones and Dog. Cow- Cowboy on there, he was great. <laughs> fucking Brian Ortega episode was great That's this right. year. That's fantastic. The fucking, there's been a ton of good episodes. Uh, Shit, he had uh, the, all the boxing dudes talking about um, actual boxing. You know, I've been talking about Darren Till for the past year, Chris. Oh, Jesus. Uh, it's not. No, it's not. Uh, but I feel like he had Alan Joban on this year, too. Yep. Uh, there was a bunch of dudes. All great interviews. They're all fucking awesome. His interviews are great. If there's a guy on that you think is interesting, probably going to be a great episode. However, all of the Maybach shit earns the Big Brown Breakdown a giant skip for this year. Especially now that he is constantly annoyed by all the talk about fucking money matchups. It drives me goddamn crazy. He's always like, well, well I don't understand me, why bro. people are even talking about these money matchups. You're like, you motherfucker. You know why. You're the, you're the reason why, you motherfucker. You're, you were the dude. You were you were the dude. Sometimes there's a man. Sometimes there's a man. Uh yeah. I just it drove, drove me goddamn nuts. He, great episodes. He's still putting out good episodes. It's great. Like some of his breakdowns are even good. Like some of the big brown breakdowns with no one on it are good. It's rare, but they are there's a couple that are good. But yeah. like Man, do I feel like I just have to fight through some fucking hot garbage to get to good episodes for some of that dude's show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm not giving the entire show a skip, but man, all of the Maymac garbage really is the reason why I'm giving the Big Brown Breakdown a skip for 2017. The MMA podcast you can't miss of 2017. Yeah, for me, the can't miss, it was kind of tough to choose. I, I wanted to go with Heavy Hands, who kind of was our overall podcast of the year. But as far as just the often can't miss, I went with Ferocial Malpractice. Um, it's kind of weird I went with them because we mentioned them before as one of our top three, really. Yep. Um, I, I liked it a lot basically because I like hearing the live reactions during his recording. I like how he'll stop and just like just fucking pause and read. Oh, you think this? You fucking donk? You know, and he'll just yeah. say that real quick. That's why I liked it the most. No, I love like, that format. You oh, know what I mean? You, the fact you, that it's live. Yeah. Oh, you, you know? donkeys would like fucking yellow mustard. Yeah. No, that was the greatest thing ever. Yeah. Like, yellow mustard. He's like, no. And We're like, talking about Jim Beam and defending yeah. Jim Beam. He's like, hey, donkeys, just because Jim Beam is not expensive doesn't mean it's, it's not great. decent. It's yeah. yeah. You know, he's like, why don't you try something else? I think he mentioned Knob Creek. Shouts at the Knob Creek. Yeah. Great bourbon. Shouts oh, also, out to Bullet. Also, shouts out to uh, the MMA, uh, I believe it was uh, Bones Nose, actually, our homie, uh, who right. gave us the uh, straight left naming for that uh, episode, I believe it was 61, something like that, some episode. Uh, but anyway, he mentioned Four Roses bourbon. Which, That's a good one. Have you had it? 
No, but I've so heard I, of it. I've had it. Times. It's pretty it's good. Great. We're going to have to do that for a future episode for sure because uh, he suggested also, that. Also, shouts out to brand new released. I will show you this later after our recording. Ballast Point? You mean Cutwater? Yes, but that's what you're saying, right? Yes. <laughs> Black Skimmer is now officially on the market. You Ooh. no longer have to uh, worry about the uh, Devil Share, which is still fantastic because they have the Moonshine, they have the Bourbon. Right. Black Skimmer is great, and they have another one. I'll show you the after recording. Perfect. But just everyone who goes to Costco anywhere. It should be national. Go to fucking Costco if you're in San Diego County or LA County or anywhere. I think maybe nationally now. Hopefully. Hopefully. I don't know yet. Not a fact. But look out for Black Skimmer in the future. Fucking great. I'm going to have to make that happen. I had it at their headquarters. Holy fuck. Yeah. I'm going to have to make that happen. That's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, But very cool. Uh, It also shouts at the MMA Roadshow for being sponsored by them. Uh, but yeah, promotional law practice was your uh, can't miss. Yep. Also, it should be noted the by the numbers pick was promotional law practice as well. Which, uh, dude, yeah, I'm on board. It easily could have been my can't miss. Only reason it wasn't my can't miss is because I had heavy hands as my can't miss. Not and that a bad was, choice. That was before we figured out our top ten. Just because Heavy Hands has been fucking fantastic, man. Oh, yeah. Like they've really stood out in a year of good podcasts in a way that is kind of crazy to me. Uh, even though their breakdowns, they've gotten plenty of fights super wrong. <laughs> don't get me like don't get me wrong. They're not nailing every fight prediction at, at, by any means, but their honesty and their reflection on and the amount of tape study they do for all this stuff is. Uh, really insightful and I feel like you I've learned more listening to that podcast than I have in a lot of uh, shows I've listened to this year so wanted to give huge shouts out to them uh, huge shouts out to everyone we mentioned and everyone we didn't uh, I mean we I will uh, put out on the if you guys go to the MMA community forums, I'm going to put out a giant list of every podcast I'm subscribed to. And I'll put out, I'll make sure all the ones Chris is subscribed to are on that list as well. Uh, Just so it's available. So if you guys are interested, I generally put out the name of the podcast and like a quick blurb about what it's about. Um, Just because I feel like there's very few people doing that and it's a super helpful kind of resource. So we'll do that. I'll link the show. But if you guys ever want to get in touch with us, you guys can shoot us an email, Chris at the sound of uh, <clears throat> Our website, sobpod.com. Oh my God, my voice is going. Uh, <clears throat> the sound of violence.com. What else we got? Uh, TSOV pod on Twitter. YouTube at the sound of violence. That's right. If you uh, YouTube the sound of violence dot com, just search under channel. Or YouTube the sound filter of violence under podcast. Cha- yeah, search filter under channel. Yeah, if you uh, just search the the sound of violence podcast on YouTube, we'll I think that's up. what it is. Yeah. Uh, let's see. You got our you got our Twitter. Check us out at MMA Podcast dot com. The aggregate site. Yeah, that place is great. Go uh, sign up for the MMA Tycoon website that shit's awesome and hilarious and great uh i don't know fucking hit us up send us an email tell us what podcast we should be listening to uh tell us how we're terrible tell us how we're great give us feedback any kind of feedback is welcome and uh love you guys man uh thank you to all the ma podcasts that existed in 2017 yeah it's been a fantastic we wouldn't be here without year. you it was good that i was actually here in the states home side recording all year granted it's the been last easier, half right? of 2016 was it wasn't tough it wasn't difficult but no it, but it makes it easier, easier on my side yeah, yeah. it's easier being in studio and i'm less yeah. coked out than i was last year yes not that i was coked out last year we aren't saying that no i just and made that said i wasn't on shrooms in uh, europe yeah i know no, we both made those stories up right now yeah that's fake fake news no yeah from uh, us at sound of violence fake uh, news obviously but uh yeah, go ahead and hit us up. Let us know what we should catch up on, and uh, thank you for joining us, man. Like Fuck this yeah. has been a this has been a crazy episode, Chris. Thank you for joining me. Uh, I have a fucking blast doing this with you every year. And uh, likewise, man. 
Can't wait for another year of it. Speaking of which, we will be back next week with Holly Hull versus Beshko Ham. Who is she fighting? Oh, Chris Cyborg, the, the grown up Beshko Ham. And Habib versus Barboza. Oh. And I think what we should do, if possible, is get some more guests like G6, like Trevor. And you I know agree. what? I want to get my fucking twin brother on here, Kyle. Let's get some more fucking people, man. And it's, we'll definitely do that yeah. on commentaries for sure. And then, for com- uh, yes, of course. For actual MMA podcast, we may have to convince Jordan to listen to a handful of podcasts one week and jump on here with yep, us. Because Jordan, he's always asking me when the fuck are the fights, you know? Yeah. So, and I know he's pretty knowledgeable yeah. too. Hey, if, we can, so. if, if we can get him to listen to like three or four podcasts and jump fuck on, yeah. I'd be happy to have him. So. We'll, uh, we'll look for that going forward, and uh, yeah, you'll definitely hear more G6 this year, for sure. Uh, and also, sh- again, shout out to Judo Bell Tyler, who's been great to us all year. Uh, we are 100% on the next week we have off going to do the Stephen Bonner uh, movie commentary, which I've written down somewhere. I forget the name of it. You guys will hear it next week, because I think it's the week after next. Uh, dude, I think it's like it's something, very soon. It's like something Warrior Assassin, some garbage. It's something like that, <laughs> yeah. It's like two weeks from now, too. So you, we'll talk about it next week, I believe. But should be fun. I'm kind of excited for that. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, man, I hope everybody has a good holiday. Go get fucked up. Drink some good beer. Yeah, have a Merry Christmas. Have You know what? This is one thing I'll say. For anyone who has a Costco card, and I know you've gotten that golden margarita mix. I used to get it from my grandma and other. That shit's amazing. Go get the fucking eggnog rum mix. Holy Ooh, shit. That that's stuff is good. amazing. Also, I highly recommend all of their vodkas. If you fantastic. like eggnog. That's the thing. If you like don't like eggnog, well, try to get in the spirit somehow, motherfucker. But eggnog's fire. Yeah. Fun. Pretty good. So... We will go ahead and wrap it there. But thank you very much, everybody, from joining us. We love you very much. And uh, we will be back next week with some uh, regular ass MMA content. Hopefully, I'm thinking there's going to be a decent amount of podcast covering stuff. Yeah, because what Holm, is it? 219 dude, is on the 30th, Holly Holm right? Cyborg. Yeah. We, or we'll preview the third. Yeah, we'll preview next week's fight. Exactly. Yeah. So it's good because it's going to be Holly Holm Cyborg and fucking uh, all Habib, the other. Barboza, Habib Barboza. And there's a, uh, Cynthia Calvillo's on there yeah. against uh, Carlos Sparza. There's a couple of good fights. fights. On, yeah. So I feel like yeah, we'll actually have a decent oh, amount of podcasts. Oh, uh, and John Lineker, Jim Rivera. Holy shit. Oh, that's well, a big which fucking I've, I believe I have Rivera in one of my uh, do. leagues. I so. believe you do. Should be interesting. So we shall see you probably on the uh, 28th, on the Thursday. So next week, a week from today. A week from today, yep. Oh, shit. Yep. So we will be back next week, but thank you very much for joining us. And until next time, everybody, go do something decadent. We out. Late.